Welcome everyone to the second meeting of April for the Miami Township Trustees. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. We have our all three trustees and Cindy Powells and Dan Guggenauer, road superintendent, and our esteemed um, head of our Chamber of Commerce. Are you actually president? Mark well, yeah, president, uh, something like that. Emperor. By now. Emperor, well, no, not emperor. No. Okay. Um, I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes from last meeting. So moved. I'll second. Okay. Hearing a motion and a second. Are there, is there any comment or adjustments or? Yeah, I would like to delete the letter N from internment. Is that having to do with cemeteries? Yeah, that would be page yep. three. Got oh, it. Several interments Got it. of the ashes. Sorry. Interment would be like at Auschwitz, right? No? I will. Or, I don't yes, know. yes. I have to look yes. At, like Japanese internment. Yeah, Japanese internment. Okay. Okay. In, in, All right. Imprisoned. Pretty, yes. Mm -hmm. And I had I had none. Okay. Hearing no more discussion, shall we vote to Move adopt? Move and second to adopt the minutes of April third, twenty twenty three, as corrected. Uh, Mr. Mucher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Minutes are adopted as corrected. All right. Moving along, I'd like to entertain a motion to pay our bills in the amount of sixty four thousand five hundred ten dollars and sixty two cents. That's general fund four thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and thirty-three cents. Fire forty-five thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars and twenty-seven cents. Cemetery two thousand one hundred sixty-six and six cents. EMS billing three thousand nine hundred forty-three dollars and sixteen cents. Road and bridge eight thousand four hundred ninety-six dollars and eighty cents. Um, I move uh, payment of these bills. I'll second. I didn't even finish that. I was just still, I was just oh. waiting. That's all right. Oh, you already read 2020? That's all right. Um, okay. Well, all right. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Aye. May we, hearing no discussion, may we vote? We moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of 64,510.62 as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Motion is approved. All right, we received some correspondence, lots of it. Our Ohio Township Association dues, 223. Um, Liz McGuire of Anthem Insurance sent us correspondence about renewal and renewal plan info. Stephanie Goff, Green County Engineer, sent us presentations of their nice meeting they had for Township Trustees last week, or maybe it was earlier this week. Um, MVRPC sent us three things, um, inviting us to a climate change seminar, which was this afternoon. I went to most of that before I had to leave. Um, they have, there's some disaster relief training, mostly having to do with long-term housing after a natural disaster, um, which I don't think really applies to us. And they had some other training opportunities. Chrisana Anderson, also of the Green County's Engineer's Office, sent us two fiber optic permits. They're starting to roll in. Um, Green County Regional Planning Executive Committee meeting packet. Lindsay Schwartz and Chris Mutcher had some exchange about, you know, was that? No, 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 that wasn't it. Um, audit of the Clifton Union Cemetery. I tried to follow that email. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's about audit of the, Clif the Union Clifton Cemetery. Um, Tyler Butler, that's the person who we had correspondence with regarding our fund 4091 and our debt service fund, the little snafu that we're trying to figure out. Um, Jen Huber. Oh, it's all figured out. Yeah. It's all done and put to bed. Yeah, and, and not, not such a happy ending, but. Um, we can finalize that at fiscal officer time. 
Oh. Well, you'll have to inform me. I read what was said, but I didn't know what, that there was something to finalize. Just, I don't think it, now is the time to talk about it. I think we go through this list. Okay, Don. Jen Huber. We're planning talking about it. Just for your benefit. We're going to talk um, about Jen Huber, attorney, um, we inquired about board meeting procedures manual, and she thought that was a meeting by meeting um, plans. OTARMA, distribution of excess reserve funds, and a YS Tree Committee newsletter. And at this time, does any member of the public or anyone else have something that they'd like to put on the agenda or comment on? I have correspondence that's not listed. Which ones? Uh, this is a uh, dated. Oh, there was four one. nine to Chris and Don. I'll put this on the agenda under new business, she says. That'd be from our chair. Which one is that? So we'll look forward to that. Which one is that? Um, that oh, okay. There was another one that's not on here. It's um somebody was. It, I must have misplaced a few because um, I definitely had this one down. There was a woman who inquired about cemetery information, but her mother does not use the internet. Was she finally get her? Did she finally get her things? Or I, do we have paper things? I have this. No, we do not. I have the same email back to us that originally was sent, that I responded to, explaining that. Unfortunately, we have no printed information, um, but it is available, and if somebody could, you know, get on a tablet or a phone or anything, they could then relay that to her. And then I got another one back saying, I asked you for this information a little while ago, like last week, what's going on? Yeah. And so I That's the one I saw. responded to that pretty much the same one. I said, please refer to my correspondence to you of March 30th. And you know, if you have anything that you'd like to know, please let us know by email or phone. And we try and help you. But we yeah. don't have anything printed out. Do you know if she's interested in traditional or? I'm not sure. Yeah. No. OK. Um, fire department. Wait. Go ahead. Could I just clean up one little thing on the correspondence? I think a number, there isn't a number, but RPCC Executive Five. Committee Meeting Eight Packet. Eight. I believe that's the one that contained the blank. Medical Care, 415 North High Street. Medical Care, 415 North High Street. Uh, that's the one that contained the uh, blank letter of support for the climate change something or another that MBRPC C is applying for and the deadline is the 20th to receive that letter of April through our yeah no okay. I'm sorry through eight yes on April through our PCC we went to, we talked about that the last meeting I think that's the packet that's got that blank one in there for us to support them with Yes, if we yeah. if we decide we want to support. Medication route. Yeah, I think that was mentioned again at the meeting this afternoon. Medication route closing eleven. Okay. Anything else? Um. Fire department. All right. <clears throat> Since the last board meeting, there have been thirty-nine EMS incidents and eleven fire. Uh, nothing too exciting. We had our first. Uh, Rescue from John Bryan State Park in this period, so that was fun. Oh. Successful? Yeah. Good. Um, first in a long time, or first this First year? for the season. Gotcha. Oh, for the season. Um, our confined space rescue training course finishes this weekend, so then we'll have 16 of our members trained for confined space. Uh, I'll go back to that one. 
on. Uh, the association, the Firefighters Association, recently held, held an election. We've had a change in the top ranks. Uh, so Nate Ayers is now the president, and Cassidy Brewer is the vice president. Uh, Dave Leiser remains the secretary, and Jeremy is will be treasurer until <laughs> until he dies, I think, at this point. <laughs> Long live the president. We've got uh, three members who want to take a Firefighter 2 transition course. Um, so Firefighter 2, the transition class is shorter than a regular Firefighter 2. Don't we, darn it. What? No, you said transition. Oh. Just, oh. 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 It's like, what? Who? Uh, the class, so it's Gavin Van Meter, Peyton Cooper, and uh, Brian Burnett all want to take the class. Um, Justin Turner is also taking it, but his class is being paid for by the host fire department because he used to volunteer with them. So I'm not sure how he worked that one out. Mm -hmm. It's 1500 bucks per person. Um, I have not yet seen any kind of budget sheets. I don't know what's in our fire training line. Um, the courses would, assuming they all pass, they would be reimbursed mostly by the state fire marshal reimbursement grant, but that's not till next year. Um, Gavin is the only one that we've told would pay because he's the only one who came to me, you know, with more than five days notice. Uh, <laughs> okay. you know, he came to me like four weeks ago. So, well, if, if, we'll see if anyone else says anything. I mean, anyone who we pay for has to sign a service contract for a year of service with us, uh, which is our standard shtick. Um, But it'd be forty-five hundred bucks for all, all three with reimbursement not till next calendar year for the Marshall. Okay, I ask a question, Madam Chair. Sure. I don't recognize the, the at least the language of this training. So, is this something that we have done on an ongoing basis for all of our staff for all times? Um, we haven't really had the need to do it for a while because the staff that we've hired recently have all come on as level two firefighters. Um, and then the ones we've had for a while, we did the class ourselves mm -hmm. many rooms ago. Mm -hmm. um, so so this is nothing more, I mean, this is a level two firefighting class. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's it takes them from the level one, obviously, to the level two. Mm -hmm. um, Instead of being 182 hours, I think it's 96 or something. Mm -hmm. um, the class is more expensive, mm -hmm. but I mean, I, I haven't priced these in a while. Everything's gone up in price, obviously, now that a paramedic class is 10,000 bucks. But um, so this is through Great Oaks at Clinton Massey Fire, and I think they're in Clinton County, somewhere down there. Um, it's a nice try. Yeah, we're not reimbursing mileage. That's, that's for sure. Um, the benefit is basically just more knowledgeable firefighters. Um, well, we've always, in, from my recollection, we've always encouraged our people to get as much training as mm -hmm. they can, and you know we have generously tried to help them out with the cost of it, if not all of it, part of it, you know, and per a commitment. Um, the, you threw me when it was the transition, you know, class. If you had said just regular level two firefighting, I'd have said, "Oh yeah, okay, we'll yeah, fine. sorry." <laughs> um, so I, I personally, as one third board, have no problem with training our people uh, as as much as we can, uh, as often as we can, as cheaply as we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The three um, Brian, Peyton, and Gavin all took their level one at their firefighter one at Clark State last almost almost two years ago. And Clark State was supposed to have the level two after that. And then they ended up doing it remotely like at St. Paris or somewhere really far away. Oh, Indian Lake. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Which wasn't really uh, yeah, wasn't really viable for the guys to draft it doing that. So this is really the first one we found. For the public and maybe other members of the board, would you explain the progression from 
newbie to one, fire fire one, fire fire two, throw in EMT levels, you know, how, how we've we've tried to get our people trained. Sure thing. Yeah. Uh, so on the fire side of things, um, there's there are three firefighter level certifications. Volunteer firefighter, which we do not do here, just because it's it's thirty six hours in length, which is only enough to get you killed, basically. Uh, and actually, under current rules and regulations, if we were to send a firefighter to a 36 hour class, they actually technically cannot fight a fire with that certification, which basically means, you know, point. So we started Firefighter 1, which is about 170 something hours currently. Um, and the firefighter one and two reflect the national standard um, curriculum. So there's firefighter one and two throughout the country. So firefighter one teaches them most everything they need to know. Um, it's also required to be a part-time firefighter. You know, um, and then firefighter two is the uh, the end of the line there, and it's what's required to be a full-time firefighter. But it also adds in. Um, a lot of important knowledge, uh, a ton of technical rescue training. So they'll do rope rescue, vehicle rescue, uh, confined space, not certification, but at least they'll get you know, a touch of it. A bunch of hazardous materials training and um, uh, fire alarm systems and structural systems on the fire side. And that's all through certification through the Division of EMS through public safety. And on the EMT side, there's three, well, four levels, but the base is the emergency medical responder, which we don't do here. And there's EMT, which is currently about three and a half months in length, in length and costs seventeen hundred bucks on average. Except at Premier Health, where it's a thousand dollars. So hmm. yay, Premier, yeah. which is who we've been sending to because because of that. So the guys have to go to Troy, but at least mm. uh, the class is inexpensive and relatively, and we get a have a really good pass rate there. Um, uh, the next level up, if someone chooses to go there, is advanced EMT, mm -hmm. which builds upon that. I'm not sure what the current hours are for that, but it adds in IV therapy. Mm -hmm. And then the penultimate is paramedic, which is a two-year training course on top of whatever you've done already, um, which is the big kahuna. It teaches them everything they need to know, drugs, IVs, cardiology, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and typically, we send people to Clark State for that. Uh, that was at least the last several have gotten to Clark State. Uh, because we get a little bit of a break since it's our community college. Mm -hmm. um, unless we've had members who live in Montgomery County who will have them go to St. Clair because then they get the, that stupendous in county rate, which is always nice. So, so those are the levels, the, the basic level certifications. And then there's fire and EMT instructor, which the state is completely redoing right now. So it'll become fire and emergency service instructor, actually just emergency service instructor. Mm. Um, and that's just to align with the current changes in the national curriculum. And then there's certified fire safety inspector as well, which we just sent yeah. you know, we just get three or four guys like, mm -hmm. So do we, do we have a written policy on like, if we, which one of these we support? Do we, do we have a policy that we, if somebody wants to get, take one of these courses, we- We do internally. In the fire department as part of our standard our current procedures and it, it lays out our training policy and that, that they have to assign so you, you have a policy and then yeah. you would put it in your budget and then we improve your budget that's how it works typically yeah and our, our base you know not a lot of people go through advanced dmt mm -hmm. so we haven't paid for advanced class in eons uh, since the career center stopped doing them uh, paramedic we have paid for, but now the classes are getting up around ten thousand bucks, so it's a that's a strain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the fire class is still relatively affordable, and the basic level class. So uh, we've helped people before with paramedic, not mm -hmm. the whole thing, but we've you know bought their books, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So we always try and kind of find creative ways. Traditionally, if we paid for your paramedic class, it's a two-year service co contract. Um, Whereas everything else is a year, just because the amount of money is spent. So, so at ten thousand bucks, we may want to raise the yeah. paramedic commitments. <laughs> and we do have a tuition reimbursement program, right, in the township. Yeah, and I could certainly sure. And I could see someone coming and saying, "Yeah, 
I'd like to take this course and it's going to better my skills to perform my job and I'm a little short here this week. I'd like to take advantage of the tuition reimbursement. So when you I say don't see that because it's just not at Ohio State, you know, that they're going there on right on, on weekend nights to oh, never mind. But um, yeah, that it, it wouldn't qualify either. We've never been asked right to do it that way. Yeah, and I I think some members probably would choose to go that route. Mm -hmm. um, these three are all young, young, so they I don't know if they have the cash up front to pay for a class. So. Mm -hmm. um, others would. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, I don't think we've ever had the one. I think some people think that's only for I'm getting my degree. Mm -hmm. and I, I've never read it that way. Mm -hmm. I just read it as advanced in training and mm -hmm. competency and all that kind of thing. So. I have one quick question. So you say we have a tuition wish reimbursement. Mm -hmm. I'm a new trustee, or I'm not a new anymore, but where does this exist? We have a the policy meeting. Yeah. It's in the policy meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been in there 10 years, years probably? Mean, About 10 years, I think, maybe a little more. Happen. Okay. Um, I don't know. Anyone else um, on this? So are you asking us to approve training? Or it's already approved. We already said we do it. It's in yeah, I just wanted to let you know and no. see if anyone had any grand objection. I mean, typically, Based on previous year spending for the fire training line, it was usually around eight thousand budgeted, uh, mm -hmm. eight or nine. So we're we're fine, and we don't. Other than a couple conferences for officers for you know professional development, I don't think we have a whole lot else. So Georgia's got um, she's going to go to um, fire inspector in August mm -hmm. at the fire academy in, in Roundsburg. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jason's going to go also, but that's like a five hundred dollar class. So, okay, cool. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and then two other things I forgot to put on my memo, uh, just FYI. Last week was National National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, i.e. Dispatch Week. Um, so it's the week we recognize our dispatchers. So uh, Tuesday night of last week, we, we provided dinner to the shift at Central Dispatch. They had uh, Chipotle, so hopefully that all went well for the rest of the 12-hour shift. But <laughs> How do those computer-generated voices eat Chipotle? You just shove it in the disk drive. It's <laughs> bite, bite, bite. That's got to be a Oh, oh, that's, oh, oh that's, 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 look at it. I ain't even waiting to roll that joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you bring your drum with you? <laughs> That's a good question, but the, uh, we still have five people there who, uh, who get the information. The computer voice actually allows them to dispatch faster, because once they get the base information, the computer takes it. And mm -hmm. That allows the call uh, the call taker to stay on the call longer with the, the caller. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been what maybe four or five months that we've been using this, and uh, everyone in the county is using it. And, they, they've got some bugs to work out. Um, it's very interesting when it's a, uh, a highway with a number, like, it doesn't have a name. So 35, uh, especially where 35 and 35 bypass split, mm -hmm. the poor thing gets all confused and goes on for about five minutes with throwing numbers out. So, um, so they're, they're, they're getting those fixed. I don't know if they shared it with the computer or not. So, mm -hmm. And then last but not least, um, Captain Ayers, uh, I think I mentioned to someone sometime recently, but he was able to get a um, tool cabinet mm -hmm. donated to the department, or well, technically to the association, mm -hmm. uh, from Lowe's and Xenia. So it just oh. arrived today. It's very nice looking. Great. Um, and the uh, association will be sending them a letter since they're the 501c3. So Lowe's four hundred dollars in tax credit, which I guess if they add it all up, is <laughs> will be a lot for those programs. So, yeah, he just walked in basically and asked. Don't know until you ask. Yeah, yeah, that's what I told him. I said, you know, what's worst come to worst, you can just walk in and ask him. And he did. He called me thirty minutes later. And said, I worked. <laughs> so, thank you, Lowe's. And a big thank you and congratulations to Captain Ayers. Uh, would you give him a hearty handshake and a pat on the back from? From us when you see him next. I, I shall. I appreciate shall. it. Okay. And he built a new workbench uh, for the maintenance room. So.
mostly out of wood pallets that we had laying around. So that worked actually pretty well. I think total spend was about 140 bucks on nails, nails and straight lumber. But <laughs> where find that? Oh, I could have donated that. <laughs> um, I have. I went to the Green County. Um, I'll bring it up here because you might have been put. We've heard about the signs, safety sign grant, the road sign. And when I, I when we read it from our correspondence a few weeks ago, none of you seemed very enthusiastic about it. So I, and not and not knowing about it myself, they brought it up. They called us by name. The the, the townships that have never applied for it, saying, "What are you doing? You're a shoe in." Um, and then they gave us maps of where our, um, I forget what time period this is, where our crashes have been and said, if you have, look at, have your people look at that. Um, so I'm just bringing it here so we could either say, yes, we'd like to apply to a road safety signage grant or, or no, we've thought this through before and it, 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 in our trouble spots, we don't need it, so. What do you guys think? Do you see that map there? Well, like, in the yeah, past, we didn't qualify. Well, so right. if that's changed, we've never this been, been turned down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not there telling me why. Mm -hmm. well, on what reason. grounds were you turned down? I don't remember. But not enough traffic generally something. to justify it. Not enough accidents at this or that corner. You know, there's a whole state. Maybe it has changed because they applied pressure to us to. Um, apply mm -hmm. that seeming thinking that we could I mean I could do it if we did I we're seeing there's a cluster here obviously at Hyde Road but it's 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 to the east east of 68 I mean there's obviously there are two at the intersection yeah east what, of those, 68 tends to be at, at more being around that curve being. at Morris but well, I guess it's a curve thing yeah, yeah. Deer strikes or just no, going, going too fast or going too fast. Yep. So, and then right posted. at the village limit, which is another weird one because it's, it's posted. I mean, that curve's posted. That, that curve's posted. Curve posted. Is, yeah. But they, she had mentioned things like maybe bright stripes along the road or other things. She mentioned a, a series of products that would fall under signage. Oh, well. Um, Could be your lucky day, Dan. <laughs> it's funny that. Uh, this map doesn't look accurate to me. As far as the number of accidents or the... the well, I think there have been a couple in the last two years at Meredith and 343. I don't know what the time period is. Um, but we'd have to ask for something specific. I don't know if any other spots, there's, there's where 370 meets Grinnell. I don't know what that is. Um, I guess that's down by well, the, by the mill, right? Is this the same? You know, that would be at John Bryan, right at the very top of the hill. So. Is this for culvert? It's for signage. It's for signage to make our roads safer. If there's a place where we're seeing a lot of accidents, we're asked to to think of any signage that might um, help us. Well, I've. We've gotten, not this year, but last year, letters about South River Road and 72. There's and the signage there. is pretty thorough. Okay. Um, and Chris, you've followed up on this where Meredith Road crosses 343 and the signage has been added there, right? Yeah. Paid for by the state. Yeah, the speed limit was reduced and we had lots of, lots of signs. And there on Hyde Road, we have a sheriff sitting, paid for by a resident. And yet that seems to be the highest area of accidents. Well, I, well on my way home from the city after this meeting, I said, well, actually, I'll take, I'll take a right turn there and see what happens. And a deer came out, so possibly deer strikes. So, yeah. 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 Where? Wait, I, I, I turned right past the ship, you know. On to high coming from Xenia, was going around the curve. I, thought, oh, this, I am taking this curve kind of fast, and then a deer came out. I didn't hit it, but um, that could be. So, what I think I hear you guys saying, or is 
go for it, Marilyn, if you want to attend the, the training and see what you come up on your fishing expedition. But you don't, you don't sound... Maybe it, if you could just pre-qualify us just a little more than because we've been once bitten, twice shy, whatever that we've is. We've been turned down a couple of times before yeah. we applied for grants. Yeah, so it's tough when you're turned down and you get shy about it. Okay, I'll look, they have, they have multiple trainings in May and June. I yeah. reckon I'll just mosey on down to a training. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay, cool. Anything else for our um, fire chief? Cemetery and roads, Stan. Since our last meeting, we had two burials. Both were ashes. Both were this past Saturday. Brandon had two ashes he took care of. And 30 cars in one of them. Really? Yeah. Wow. The afternoon. We've got one in Clifton this coming Saturday, and another one next Saturday in Glen Forest. And the 4th of June, we will have a first interment in Oak Grove. It'll be ashes. <laughs> in Oak Grove. Oh. Ashes. She inquired about a, a box being built by someone. Somebody's so this build. is for a um, traditional, not traditional, but a natural burial grave or for a tree grave? Tree grave, uh -huh. which is still a natural burial grave. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I couldn't figure out how to differentiate the two. It's for mace. Mm -hmm. Fine, so we have to have you look up there mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's a that's the first. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. That would be. Things are moving. So what do you do? Just do. Does the tree come right away, or is that the? No, it's a year. A year. Mm -hmm. That's right. It says to settle for a year. It, actually, if it's a, um, you said it's an act. It's It'll a be ashes. two ashes. We're doing one now, and then the husband will be there also sometime. That will work. I, there's almost no reason you can't put a tree in. That was, that was one of my questions. Yeah. Could we do it? I don't see why not. And wait a little while, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'd be cool. We can get a tree in that way. The question is, I guess, do we consult the family and ask them if they still want to go ahead with the interment of the ashes when in a, a month or six weeks or, or when a good growing season is, I don't want to put these trees in in August or July, you know, um, you know, they'd be dug back up again. Because well, they're not going down, those ashes aren't going down four, five feet. No, and they're going to basically go in the corner, kind of the corner of the lot anyway, they won't be in the middle of the lot. I'm trying to allow room, even with the bodies, to allow room for the tree in the center so I don't disturb the lot. If we bury a full box, it's a 10 by 10 square. I mean, we could, yeah, one side or the other of the tree, right? Yeah, I just thought with ashes, it would go it under the root ball of the tree, just the same as the way a body would. Well, bodies are 42 inches deep, we have to dig a three foot hole. That's why I'm wondering, that's why I know we set the body off. Here and put the tree on it. You know, we got ten foot by ten foot. So if I put the body here, we could do the tree and, and not disturb the body. And if you want it under the tree, I'm going to have to go deeper. But in this case, it's ashes. It's ashes. Would they like the ashes done at the same time as the tree ball? Well, they already have planned to do it on the fourth of June. Do the ashes and do the tree later. That's what I've been telling people. That's how they thought this way they were doing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to change it, can. Well, I don't want to change it to where we have the ceremony and have a tree planting at the exact same time. That's just way too much work, too much coordination. If, again, we don't want these trees planted until uh, either right. early spring or late fall, that sort of thing. If they've right. got to wait, they got to wait. But well, they're, they all know that okay. tree will be planted a year later. That's what mm -hmm. I'm explaining to them. Mm -hmm. It's just a placement of the body now throws me off because I I don't want to put a body in the middle where the tree will go, and then 
try to dig on top of it a year later. Are you talking about a body or ashes? I'm talking about bodies. Ashes can go. He's he's not talking about a body this time. He's talking about the ashes. future. I mean, do they have to be right under the tree? Well, I mean, that was the whole idea for the burial under the tree. Now, if you're saying they're buying this grave, a 10 by 10, 10, by 10 grave. with the intention of having a full, bear, a full body burial and a set of ashes, or 10 sets of ashes, but having a full body burial, well, that's a whole, that's a whole other story because if you were to put the ashes under the tree, you, there'd be no place to put a body under the tree. I wasn't going to place the ashes. I was going to place them off. I wasn't going to disturb the mm -hmm. four foot by four foot center of that ten foot mm -hmm. because it takes three foot deep by roughly four foot hole when planting size trees and put them. Okay, I didn't know there was going to be a, a full body at some point under there. I didn't know we were putting them under the tree. I thought we would just put them on that space somewhere and plant the tree next to it. You know, I don't want to disturb a body. If we bury a full body and a year later, I don't want to dig a hole and disturb a body. Now, the idea is that the, the hole is deep enough during the, at the burial, time of burial, that it leaves space between the covering of the body and what is necessary to put the root ball on top of it. That's the whole idea of burying people having the tree above to provide nutrients from the body for the growth and the longevity and the whole goodness of this. And having it, it four feet be, off to the side. It would be close, it wouldn't be four foot away, it would just be that far away. It's just here and then the tree is in the center. So how deep I mean, how big, a, how big a sapling are we putting in? They take a three foot deep hole. That's, a, that's, that's unusual. That's a good sized tree. That's very unusual. It's a three foot ball. Wow. That's big. How tall is the sapling? So you only, so you only need two feet additional to, to, to put a body down and cover it. And then come back and take your three foot hole and you're you, you, you're not going to disturb the, the remains. The bodies go in around four, 42 inches deep. Yeah, so well, they're going to have to go. You've got eight they feet. may have to go a little bit deeper. That's. I mean, there's no casket. There's no vault. Right. They only need about 18, 20 inches tops on top. Take them deeper. I have a, I would put them down in five foot. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be that much more difficult because it's only going to be a body. There's no shroud. There's no casket. There's no. There I mean, might there be, might be a shroud. Might be a casket. Green Pardon burial, me. Green burial casket. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. Did, did we say we're allowing that? I was under the impression we were just asked about shrouds or burial caskets. Mm -hmm. Casket? Not a natural burial. I mean, pine box, maybe. But they that takes up space. That's the that, oh, that's the reason that the idea was. So strictly shroud? Strictly, yes, a body. Only a shroud. A shroud. Or, or what? Yeah, or a sheet, or a. Well, that's a shroud. Well, I thought it's wrapped in something. We don't place burial. just a body in the ground. Yeah, it's wrapped in something. Yeah, and in usually the, a shroud or it's in a green burial casket. In the prairie, boxes are left. Yes, absolutely. But not in the. Would, would you confirm that it really is a three-foot wall? Well, the one we are. are Example tree was, or whatever you call it, spec tree, or wherever we planted it, so the grove on it. See, we're defeating the purpose of not allowing caskets 
of, of any way, shape, or form. Because what we, what we don't want is we don't want a container put at the bottom of the of the grave, dirt on top of it, come back a year. A year's not enough time. That container takes a while to disintegrate, and then for all of that material to go back down. Now, if we bury a or if we plant a tree on top of it. And then it starts to deteriorate and the container compresses, then potentially we have the tree that goes off to the side or who knows what. That's what we were trying to prevent. We, we, want, the, we want the tree to have a firm foundation to grow. On a body. Yes. I think we could discuss this further off on the side. <laughs> no, we can't. Okay. That, would, that would necessitate another public meeting. We cannot have discussions among us. Te technical decisions about something I don't think has to be in a meeting. According it, to the order of the state, it does. The, sorry to disagree with you, Don, but it's more than a technical discussion. And I say that it, it, as an ordained minister, it's more than a technical discussion. Typically, as Chris points out, and rightfully so, that root ball should be above the body so that the roots encompass the body and bring it up into the in, into the living tree. Um, that's, I, I mean, that's just that's the way the the ceremony and and the, the ritual around that is is that's the importance of it. Um, so it, would, it, it, is, it is more than a technical discussion, it really is. Okay. Okay, we'll, um, we're gonna leave the details. Well, if, if it, okay. We should for the whole, I mean, so a lot of things, you and Dan could work out the, techni the technique of bearing. Mm -hmm. uh, but this points out something that came up at our um, April 10th mm -hmm. um, Natural Burial Committee meeting mm -hmm. here in this room. And that is, and they had asked, well, what, what do people receive at, um, and I called Dan, what do people receive when they come in for a burial? And um, he said they don't really take, they don't sign a contract. They, and they don't sign rule, or they get, and you tell them the rules, maybe, and ask them to refer to the website. And uh, one of the people that was at our meeting said, I walked away w without anything. How do you know how to make out the deed? Do you, they, you just take I their write name? Write the information down. But their name, us. their address. Give to Margaret, so, and usually write something down for them so they know, and I give them a map. Yeah. And, and Margaret provides the a deed. complete copy with the deed of the rules and regulations. Oh, she sends it to them? Mm -hmm. yep. You sure about that? Oh, I'm positive about that. She sends okay. a map and a complete set of the rules with every, with every certificate of internment. Um, certificate of internment. You mean when someone dies? No, when someone purchases a certificate of internment. Okay, so... They get a deed. No, they don't get a deed. They get a certificate of internment. And so there's no Sorry, such thing as a deed. I mean, we do, really we do have our no site. such thing as a deed. We do have a oh, thing on our right. site you that file of the certificate of internment. Yes, I, I call it deed. That's what I tell them. Okay. okay. Well, we do have a thing on our site that says that each person has a file and it has this, this, and this, and yeah. it's like three things. And mm -hmm. we have all we have is one thing. Right. We would like it if, and we would be willing to do all the work. For one thing, when we're looking for people, there there's not very much information about them. If they could just fill out a form, this is my email address, this is my name and my address and everything that we keep. And I, we would like to suggest that um, we have, especially, it, we're just the prairie people, especially for the prairie, if you could hand them, say, these are the rules, could you sign, could you sign this? I have a separate sheet of paper, could you sign, I understand the rules and I'll do them. And we also, are producing a little postcard that we had talked about that we'll mail out in the spring. Remember, no plastic flowers or, or light up signs or whirly gigs and um, no invasive species. And here's the where you find a list of plants. So, um, not to make things complicated, but 
if we produce a few forms for you to have them sign and take with them, is that, would that be a problem? Um, well, I'm asking this problem. I mean, a more complete, like you go in to take one of those, those certificates and sometimes all it has is a name and a plot number. What certificate are we referring to? The, um, whatever's in their file. And what's on the Okay, that's, a, that's different than what they're actually receiving when they purchase a, a certificate of internal. Okay. The, the copy of the map, the copy of the rules and regulations, there's only one copy of that, and that goes to the purchaser. Oh, map? You give them map, rules, and regulations? Mm -hmm. Specifically to the cemetery they've been buried in? Mm -hmm. And goes to the purchaser? I give them a copy of the map, and this is your number 195 or whatever, and then I think Margaret sends my map with it marked. Mm -hmm. Just that on them. I mean, because my map has, you know, everyone that's sold. Although you're highfalutin. And but she gives them a clean map with just their mark on mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And they're not getting it when, with them, they're getting it later when Margaret sends it out. They get no, one for me. When they purchase the certificate of internment, when they purchase the grave, they're getting, they're getting I it. hand them a map and we mark this is your grave, which has marks for all the others that are sold. But then Margaret's one is just a clean map, which is their mark on it. it. Doesn't have all mine marks on it. And what else do you hand them? That's it. A piece of paper. You know, I received this from you, or this is what you're. Just a map. If some mail it in, so I'll give them a piece of paper on, on instructions on where to mail it to, and, and and list how you'd like to be or a certificate of internment made out. Is, and that's all I give them. Is there any problem with having them sign, I know the rules? And another problem is if they purchase one, 10 years later they die, their kids come in from Idaho, or no, the kids don't live in Idaho, the kids live in Massachusetts, and they come and... Um, I know. And they don't know the rules. Right. And they, maybe these postcards we have say, don't forget, here's some basic rules. And many yep. of the monuments from the very beginning don't follow the rules. Well, that's why we're working on it. We're, we're identifying the, the top three right now. And um, if, if we don't put a lid on it, then it, no pun intended, it's going to get worse. We now have a, we now have a stone with a, it's beautiful. It has a, an image of the, their daughter on it. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one with a picture on it now. Um, so <sighs> this has to be... Otherwise, they'll say, oh, you did that, well, I'm doing this, and you did that, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. So that, that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're trying to, that, uh, if there's anything, people are very happy, if there's anything they're not quite happy with, it's the, the growing, pushing the boundaries. So that's, I'm not, we're not just doing this to make busy work, but I assure you we will do the work. Well, I'm not trying to speak for Dan, but in general, my, brief knowledge of this is during a burial Dan's interaction with the family especially a responsible member of the family let's say the spouse slash mother father whatever it is is minimal yes no we just want to when I meet with them I tell them you know this is what you can have I show them so you can have this you can't have that but yeah at the burial I yeah, I'm not talking about the barrel. I'm talking about when he acts, interacts with them. Oh, when when he sells. So what, when sells somebody them when somebody dies, do they have to come back to you and say, "Hey, Dan, we're ready to cash in this um, little pot we bought," or do well, they usually just funeral home? Funeral home. Call and oh, says, "Hey, we got a burial." Okay. Okay. We might have to interact with the funeral homes then. Okay. I don't want to take any more time today. We'll we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Any 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 more for <laughs> any more about cemetery tonight? Um, roads, Dan? Well, let's see. Um, th Thursday I'll be helping Bath Township with the COVID replacement. Okay. About half a day. My Brandon will be mowing. He started mowing today, but he rained out. Mm -hmm. He'll be mowing in the cemetery. Or... Rained and snow. Rain and snow. And oh, really? Oh, good. Really? Really? It was fun today. Yeah. Are we getting more? Are we get some snow? Okay, cool. Yeah, there was some snow, which was probably just sleet on my... There was a little snow flake. It could be... 
lightweight, sweet. And then we get Did you notice the good crop of dandelions out there? Yes, I'm very impressed. And I, clover. Very, very impressed. I too. thought about you every time I went by. I said, "Boy, oh, oh no, I must be loving it out here today." On this lot? Yeah. I love them. See, there we go. We got two lovers. They're here for a month and all. They They'll do the damage by spreading seed. But They'll be back. We didn't poison anything. No, we didn't. Um. The, the fiber optic permits are, are starting to come in, Dan. Um, I, I, I directed them to Richard. I don't know if you guys saw that, that email. Mm -hmm. um, one's for Golden Will Court, and the other one is for the name of the road I can never remember. Do you remember what, where it was? Um, what anyway. Was I'll get copies of those for you. You should probably like give them a once over if anything comes up for you. The, we're, the Green County's doing the permits for us and um, so they've done the process. They have to we just look them over in case something doesn't look quite right. Like they're you can't like you can't put a car there. Are you going to open our roads up to do this or just in the ditches um, along the road? I think they'll go underneath it. I don't I think they'll the line bore them probably, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're doing more, there's a shortage of poles apparently. Everybody's getting broadband and their infrastructure money's coming in and poles are, there's a shortage. So they were going to do 80% poles and then in the denser areas do underground wires and, and um, not wires, but optic fibers. And um, they're doing more, they're going to do more underground than we thought. So. Um, Mine's already done and they, the pole was right there. Yours is? Yep. For the village? Yep. Yep, I got it. You that. got yours? I'm still speed. waiting. I really? mean, is, is it working? Two months. You're, you're yeah, two months free so far. So, <laughs> yeah, it, works, it works perfectly. No That's glitches. Good. We no, are no. so, we are half the price. Limping along. Half the price? We are limping along, waiting for old Daniel Badger to get back to us. Um. <laughs> I don't know what your thought is. But probably the best way to get in that information is just to put it in his mailbox as they come in. I'll print them and put them in your mailbox. Then you just take good. a look. Because you they, wouldn't want to go out to his office. Or a wrench or something. Um, so this is for me to... Well, I think Richard's going to look at them. It, it's like they're going to be coming in or we're going to put a pole here and a pole here and a box here. Or we're going to dig here. And I don't know that Dan would have to do much to... And it's all very technical. You can't really tell exactly what they're doing from this. It just says Jacoby Road, you know, 400 feet left or past the first transformer. There's a new pole. Yeah. So uh, I would just whatever. notice that there's a new pole, yeah. basically. And, and, the, and you might have people that are um, not happy about the new pole or the new box. Well, all right, where do I direct their... They're not going yeah, to gonna gonna call them. We're going to get <laughs> you Where do I direct them if they do? Uh, how do they, I direct they are going to supply us with a number to call to... Um, no, no, they said, don't worry. We'll give you a number. You tell them to call us. So, um, call you know, there might be road work and stuff. And so is, is Richard... Is it too technical for Richard? Is he... Are we asking him to do that? Are we adding to his job? Are there going to be many? I can't tell how many of these there are going to be. I mean, it's certainly, you know, if if he wanted to take it on, it's certainly not outside of his range of expertise. Um, but there's real. I don't really see anything that we can that that he could do that Dan couldn't, or you or myself or Don. Uh, okay. You don't have to sign off on them. It's just for information only. Uh, so I guess it's only if something. Somebody we're letting you know where the new obstacles are for most yeah. inches. Yeah, that's true. They'll be adding, and there'll be new things to blow around or trim. Or when they, 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 when they might they be working there. there. Um, yeah. If they put in a junction mark. They don't there. block the swale. Yeah. I also found out, I guess we're getting, that our county's getting four roundabouts. Mm -hmm. You know what a roundabout is? Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody calls it by a different name. Oh, yeah. Get one on Dayton Yellow Springs Road, I, if I heard correctly, at Trayvine. Oh, really? Dear. Wow. They're getting one on Hilltop. Fairground and Hilltop. Fairground and Hilltop. 
I didn't hear the date now, Springs, but I guess so. Dayton Although, um, don't quote, Stephanie has her Don't way. quote me on that. And at, at State Route 235 in Byron, they're going to put in a turn lane because people often get slammed. People I, I, She doesn't want that either. Who doesn't want it? Stephanie. Well, she's the one who told us. Yeah, well, she was oh. told to tell you. <laughs> oh, is she going to try to block it? Uh, she doesn't have really any she, she, way to block she it. She was very professional. She didn't show it. Her face didn't show at all that she didn't want them. Well, was there any steam kind of rolling off? <laughs> there was. I wondered what that <laughs> yeah, was. That's probably it. <laughs> one of those is at 235 and Zenia, and isn't it? 68. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna. I know they really save lives. I'm not sold that's, on that's this. gonna help that intersection. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold on the aesthetics, but they will save lives because you know the, the T bone is not a fun accident. Um, well, for all the accidents I have missed causing by that much at roundabouts, <laughs> okay, yeah, it took me a while to learn the rules. You wait to get in, but once you're in, you get the right of way. It's why everybody needs to know that. It's why everybody, everybody knows that. Well, everybody's on the same page. That's great. Yes, you're down. Everybody needs to be I, on the same page. Mm -hmm. We weren't taught that, or I wasn't taught that, and yeah. driver said, because, but apparently the, the thing you call that, the name you have for that thing, can, they, helps, you can really locate a per, the region of the country that a person's from by what they call a roundabout. So I guess I'm from the Midwest. Lots of them on the East Coast. I don't know so much on the West Coast, but... Um, fiscal, any more road stuff? And, or any, does anybody have anything more for Dan regarding roads, I should say? Any bites on your truck? No, our pictures should be on sometime soon. We have a resolution. And the bush hogs, too. There's no reserve on the bush hogs. The truck was 10,000. We need to Um, fiscal officer's report. Um, we have a resolution 2023-24. Um, do I ask for a motion first or read it first? Read it. All right. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Um, the gas tax fund 21, 2021 increased by 2000. Fire fund 2191 um, compensation of board and commissioners increased by 6000. EMS billing 2281. Operating supplies increased by 50,000. Do, do, does anybody know what the 50,000 is about? Mm -hmm. We passed that last. We passed. Oh, of course. The, the, the wish list. Mm -hmm. The wish list. I move adoption of resolution 2023-24. I second that. Well, I was absent when the wish list was passed out. Mm -hmm. I assume you guys thoroughly. I noticed. Oh, I didn't. I did, did notice that there was ten thousand for. Um, uh, website upgrade and mobile phone platform or was that 90 percent of that is mobile phone platform there if you recall and that was discussed at our last meeting there they're basically that. new ipads that are oversized and overpriced i mean you know <laughs> and they do tons of stuff that's right I did and that. that they will now interface with this new interconnectivity whatever it is that the county is doing. Mm -hmm. Remember, that gives you lots more information yeah, right. on right. every incident. So it's mostly that. Mostly, yeah. Okay. Um, can I get a motion on this? We did. I think we did. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? The movement seconded to adopt resolution 2023-24 amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Moocher. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Um, zoning inspector. Before we move oh, on so past the fiscal officer, I had said I would briefly say what I know about 
the 4901 incident. Okay, please. And I'm, I'm going to leave a lot of the where's and what, wherefores and therefores out and just kind of get to what happened or what's, what is happening. Uh, at some time in the past, expenditures were made out of the um, debt service fund. The debt service fund for the building. Yeah. It should have been made out of the uh, capital improvement fund or should have been made out of some other fund. It, it doesn't really matter. But that those payments resulted in a negative balance in the capital fund of 119000 That money, that 119000 should have been paid out of the debt service fund, but it, but it wasn't. It was paid out of the capital. During an audit that was found, and it was told that in addition to the 119000 that had to be cleared up, because you can't run deficit, the money from the sale of the, of the firehouse, the old firehouse, should have been put into the to the capital fund instead of staying in the general fund. So three hundred eighty-three thousand was transferred into the uh, debt sir, the capital fund, which negated the hundred nineteen thousand and left two hundred and eighty two hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars to the to the good to the good in the capital improvement fund. Now, my problem was that left $119,000 floating around that was generated by the sale of the firehouse, was earmarked for the purchase of a new medic in the not so distant future as we could, and that money belongs in the capital fund, which is the fund that it should have been in with all the rest of the capital fund from the sale of the firehouse, and should have 383 in that fund. Okay, I've gone through as many auditors as I can. I am not going to go to the auditor of the state of Ohio. I just don't feel comfortable enough that this is something that I should take to him because it is our mistake. The auditor, Tyler Boyd, who's the senior auditor for our section, whatever it is, not Tyler Boyd, Tyler Butler, said that legally this money cannot be moved from the from the uh, debt service fund back even though that's where it came from or should have been back to the capital improvement fund so the money does exist the money does exist, exist in the, the debt, debt service fund. See, that's fund, what I didn't but understand. it's not leaving the debt service fund what if we don't know any debts with it it's going to be there until the same, that's the same fund, obviously, keep in mind, that's got 700 plus thousand dollars extra in it because David Graham so generously was putting 5% of all the property levy tax in there and it built, built up and built up and built up and he can't, take, he can't take the money back out of that either. You remember, I tried to get him to pull money out of there so we'd get back down to a reasonable level. And he what, said no. Was that 5% because... Or is that referring to the interest rate was five percent, but we really got a lower interest rate, mm -hmm. than that. so we, we he, he, he generously gave us a five percent interest rate, or he didn't no. he speculated that we'd have that, right? And we actually got a much lower one, right? And so more money went in than right. should have, or and, have. And, right? And he he can't take it back out. So what he did is, if you recall, is he reduced the amount by yearly of that levy fund that he's going to give us instead of giving us the full amount that we need to to, to pay our bi-yearly payment on the on the building it's now going to be approximately $125,000 less so then we have to draw out of that surplus in the debt service fund by about $125,000 why it's that amount I have no idea so after 10 years ish it'll be back to roughly zero and then he will adjust how much he gives us every six months how much he distributes he doesn't give us to match the payment that's the, that's due because the payment's the same for the next 28 years or 27 years it's the exact same thing every six months 100 i don't know 
119,000 or well, no, not 119. But anyway, so that's where we are. And his suggestion was we have 120,000 in the AARP, AARAP fund, and we should use that money to make whole the capital improvement fund if we want to have enough money to purchase a new ambulance in the somewhat not so distant future. Was that specifically that 119? Were, were we generally having capital for an ambulance, or was that specifically earmarked for that? The ARPA money? No, the, the, the 119. I mean, the, the, um, the capital fund stuff. The 383 right? from the sale of the so building. So we still have money in there. 263. Yeah. But we need 400 plus for a new medic when we ever get it. Which is. 383 is a lot closer to 400 than 269. And as we all know, we have no money in the general fund to make up for this. I mean, there's just no money floating around, no unappropriated, uh, unappropriated capital. The only thing we have is this ARPA money. Really? Yes, really. Well, I have General a, funds I in have the past a... have run in the red. We've just been fortunate in the past few years because of lower CPIs and inflation rates and all the rest of that stuff, and the generosity, if I might say, of the Ohio legislature to uh, re recoup some of the local, local government distribution money that was taken away by the previous administration, in addition to the one and a half cent gas tax that uh, was, was added on to our, our road department, it obviously didn't go to the general, but it was, we didn't have to supplement from the general into the road anymore because they had a little more money. I have all kinds of feelings about this. And a f one of them is frustration at not completely understanding it. Um, well, please call, call well, Auditor Butler and he'll, he'll explain it. And not knowing. And did what, you see the email from him? I did. I did. I saw it. I was, read it. I, it was I saw pretty it. straightforward. I, I, well, it's it, it's straightforward if you've been doing this for 26 years. I mean, seriously, I'm not against the learning curve. Um, so I'd like to understand it more. Um, I, I got. Well, we have all time in the world. The medic costs how much? 400 plus. What do you mean we have all time in the world? Was that? To, to talk about it. Tonight? Well, tonight, tomorrow, the next couple of years. Okay. We're not going to get the medic for a couple okay. of years or so. All right. So I'd like to understand it better. Um, I have all kinds of feelings about the ARPA money because it's a one. It was a one-time investment, and then I, I don't. I don't actually feel. I know we took the ten million thing. He, I saw him ask that. That um, I don't think procedurally we did that well. Um, I wasn't here. Um, I won't bring it up tonight. But I don't. I don't feel like procedurally that was done well. What what procedural part are you referring to? Well. I was very interested in the, ARPA, even before I was elected, in the ARPA money and the, the things we, it could be used for. Um, and I would be the first one to use it to pay our bills and get the things that protect the community if that's what we need to use it for. That's where we are. Was, yeah. And we might not have been quite there, po or pre-119,000 short in the, in the, in the capital, but if we are, we are, because the fire department is not going to have a couple hundred thousand dollars in a, in a, in a year or two lying around to, to, to get the ambulance. And um, I guess that the fact that it was, that, that was earmarked for um, fire and rescue, mm -hmm. I, at a meeting where I wasn't here, that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way because People knew I, that was important to me. Um, I'm sorry that was not done on purpose. And Don, Don asked at the time, 
I'm not remembering these details. Well, it's on video. So Don asked at the time, is this being earmarked for something? And, and you said, no, it's not being earmarked. Specifically, we're just trying to qualify for this thing. We're just trying to qualify for that, that what do they call it, that um, final ruling where they, they say, okay, forget it. You don't have to justify it. Just um, if you make under 10, the 10 million deal. Well, so, sure. And, so, I, and I, I understand that, but at some point, where we started get to get squeezed to the point where we had to we had to contribute from our general fund in addition to whatever but one hundred forty thousand dollars just to get to the point where we could start getting the the tax advances from right. from the county that ARPA money got more and more and more dedicated to paying salaries. Personnel cost. You got dedicated to paying salaries because we should have paid because you yeah. because you wrote yeah. in the paper. Not just me, us, us as a board. We committed that money to to the potential of needing it for the fire personnel cost, which well, we did need it. Now, well, we it was my it was mistake. It was before the the levy. We didn't know whether the levy was passed or not then we may have a, we will have enough to pay, but you didn't know at the time when you did it, I, you didn't know whether the levy was going to pass or not. After the levy then passed, we went broke by, by the, October. We the, didn't have enough money to pay the because personnel the, Because costs. the levy money hadn't come in. Right. We and, had to get from I don't, here I don't to there. I feel satisfied right now that I still know where we are, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. We have plenty of time. Okay. We have, we have yeah, I, I'm going to figure out, like, I have no idea right now. But like, it was my mistake letting, well, it was my mistake for a couple of reasons, but that's another story. Letting what? Letting, <coughs> letting this board spend $140,000 of general fund money before the, committing the ARPA funds for it. But well, we didn't have any kind of process for ARPA funds. Well, sure I did. Don, we did. as much as the Don had his, his had even one, help. one open meeting. One open meeting. Um, community input meeting. And you, you, at the March twenty first meeting, you said, "Are we, are we earmarking this for something?" You said, "No, absolutely not." I'm sorry. You said, "I have this blank piece of paper. It's not filled in yet. I want to make a copy." I'll fill it in later. You voted for it, then you filled it in. I just think it wasn't done well, and um, and we have we have all kinds of time to fill it to figure it out. And I will be the first one to support the give up the investment in the American Rescue Plan for our expenses when I'm convinced that's what we need to do. Okay, fine. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't think I think if I said that clear enough. I, I'm not. Sure. Okay. Well, let me Wait, say but again. that's that's okay. my report on okay. the uh, um, on the uh, 401 4, 490, 40, yeah 4901 debacle. And. I know you went to extraordinary lengths to try to figure out where that 119 went. And can I ask you one more question? So if, if we got, a, and this is a thing I don't understand, if we got a good deal on a, a rate, we're paying, I don't know, two, what, what kind of rate did we get, two, two point something or three? Three, three pretty, even. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so everything's being overpaid and we're ahead of time. At what point does the taxpayer see, like, oh, we, we finished early, or, oh, our, our, our payments are going down. Is there a point where there's a break for the taxpayer? Um, I don't know how to respond. You know, I didn't ask you. I asked Chris. <laughs> I have a hammer. That's beautiful. <laughs> Smash that watch. Not being a county auditor, I'm not 100% sure, but I see it as two possibilities. We get to a point where David Graham makes a decision that, that he, he's, he obviously sees that he's collecting too much money from the levy, and and it's dispersing more than we need, et cetera, et cetera. So he cuts that back. 
By cutting that back, he lowers everybody's. He, either by lowering everybody's, and I'm not sure he can do that, but if he could, that would be an option. Or instead of having a 30 year loan, we now have a 25 year loan because we have the extra money. So we have saved, you remember what I calculated that? It's like we're going to save $13 million in principal if we pay it off. If we pay it off at the rate that we're collecting, I thought that I thought the building was um, five million. How could we say thirteen million in principal? Uh, because the it's interest. just like it's just like oh, the mortgage interest, on your, thirteen million. In yeah, interest. it's just like the mortgage on your house. You know. Wait, no, 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 no. There's not thirteen million interest on five million dollars. Uh, over thirty years, you bet you, you're sweet. There is bibby. The word <laughs> you're looking for is bibby. Don't no. have a bibby. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Um, the answer is pay cash for your house. Okay, I should have thought of it then. So, so, okay. So the taxpayers gonna, will benefit from our our reduced our good fortune our good fortune of going with the USDA as opposed to going out on the open bond market for the capital. So you reckon we we'll save about thirteen? Yeah, so. that much. That much interest in. It might have been nine, but it's okay, still up there. Yeah. So if, if the people out there didn't hear, we're going to have some savings at some point for the firehouse. Big savings. Yep. Okay. I want to thank you, Chris, for being patient with me and for hunting down that um, terrible circular. I wish I had better news. Yeah. Um, so he it, made it sound like, oh, well, they're. You know, there's a possibility that there might be some legal channel that you might be able to to follow if you hire a, a legal attorney that's, uh, that's yeah. a specialist in, yeah. in finances and blah, 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 blah. And I said, sure, that's going to happen. But the 119, it's not going to poof, disappear. It's going to go off the, our debt. Yeah, oh, it's, sure. It's going to go toward our payoff of the building. Yeah, or paying it off early. Okay. It's going to be like one. So that would be that part. One payment early. We have that. Oh, so we have that part, but we also have the, the savings from the thing. Well, that's the glass is half full, Chris. Absolutely. Uh, the that, not I like lost. that attitude. The money's not lost. I'll always look at the bright side. How's that song go? Um, always. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, sunny side of the street. There you go. Mm -hmm. They're two different songs. Okay. Two different eras. Okay. Don, do you have anything to add to this madness? Under fiscal officer? No. Okay. How about under 4901? No. Okay. Um, zoning inspector, of course, isn't here this month. Is he in France? He's going to France? Mm -hmm. Until yeah. next Tuesday. Until next Tuesday. Um, I was just seeing that there's a BZA hearing coming up. Um, do we need to provide minutes and court reporters and things like that? Or will he let us know? <laughs> or do we make that decision? He makes that decision. Okay. Uh, and if he doesn't, then we do. That's how we got a court reporter for the last two weary BZA meetings. Okay. I hired the person. Richard did not. Okay. Richard borrowed a microphone from his friend, Steve. Okay. Um, anything more to say that I don't know if that's public information or not yet. Um, standing committee reports. This is the second meeting of each month. MBRPC, they canceled this month because, well, they didn't really cancel. I think it became the, the climate. That's me. Um, the, the climate seminar they had this afternoon that was somewhat interesting. Um, I found out we're, we're, we, we might be eligible to get an audit, an energy audit of this building um, for what that's worth since we're supposed to be state of the art energy cons conservation, but um, the, they, an audit could turn up some suggestions, so I don't know if y'all are interested in that. Um, I like that idea. Green County Regional Planning. Uh, both the executive committee and the full board, uh, full commission met and basically 
went over the same two things. One was the, uh, the transition of the uh, authority of the county engineer to the uh, county commission for uh, decisions having to do with county, well, with all roads in the county and all bridges in the county. Wait, could you repeat that? Uh, prior to this happening, uh, the Green County engineer has always assumed they control the maintenance, the improvement, the reconfiguration of all of the mm -hmm. county roads. Um, some question whether that included township roads or village roads or but that, let's not get into that, and all the bridges in the county. As a result of some uh, disagreement as to uh, what to do in the future with a couple of county roads, uh, specifically Hilltop, uh, Trayvine, uh, some roads out in that neck of the woods, uh, the, the people, the developers in those areas wanted some changes made and were more than willing to step up and pay for those changes. The county engineer did not feel those changes were justified in the long range or whatever her justification was. And since it's always considered that the county engineer is the final authority on all decisions such that have to do with roads and bridges, these people were unhappy. And these unhappy people made some in roads to the county commission to see if there was anything that, that they knew that they could do or any ideas and to make a long story short the county commission uh, pursued some legal avenues I have no idea what it was which resulted in uh, legal opinions that the county commission has the final jurisdiction over county roads uh, and what to do with them and how to maintain them and all the rest of those things that the county engineer used to and uh, also with the bridges and in addition to that they've decided the engineers have decided to put in a in a uh, an appeals process for if, if you want your road widened or turned or whatever paved or something and, and the engineer says no not gonna do it sorry you can take your appeal now to the county commission and I don't know how often they're going to meet for this appeal, but uh, if they decide that your argument is better than their arg the engineer's argument, then they will instruct the engineer to make these changes. Okay. That's huge. So that's what, that's what half of those meetings were about. The other half of the meetings were uh, kind of an informational uh, sessions for a new members or maybe not so new members who weren't really 100% sure of what regional planning does and what their authority or lack of the authority. A lot of, a lot of people think regional planning has all kinds of authority for um, making changes and, and, uh, and zonings and, and this, that, and other thing, whereas they really do not. They are a recommending body. Uh, the same way a planning, as planning or a zoning commission is a recommending body. Only the elected officials have the final word on actually what gets changed or what doesn't. Oh. And so that was that was kind of laid out to everybody just so we'd all be on the same page. And we all said thank you and went home. And I'm going to never run for county government. Okay. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we won't. You're not committed on that. Um, Clifton Union Cemetery. What's what's up with those emails that we're getting about? You could get audit, but you might get audit light if you do certain financial things. Uh, okay. We received an audit. Uh, the that is the same auditors as does the township. Uh, they seem to be oriented towards much more, a much larger uh, operation 
and they've asked us to sort of examine our processes to identify where there might be risks of fraud just for our procedures we should be more thoughtful and uh, less informal but nothing was pointed out that had been done done wrong um, we're Margaret today started trying to uh, canvas the, the three board members for a, a you know, our sort of biannual meeting maybe soon uh, I don't know quite where this had been stored but Linda Parsons in Clifton has come up with uh, an old record book of the burials do you know anything about this mm -hmm. where it had been yeah, it was Randy Reif had it. Randy Reif had it, okay. And it was in a black plastic bag. She's taken it to it's very fragile. To an archivist. Wow. It's been photographed. And now she's asking uh, if Miami Township has a place we could store it. And I don't know why we couldn't store it in our archive room with our other records. Depending on the age and the condition, and whether it's something that we can we can uh, access to see the information, and somebody to go over and, and check and see whether the information uh, is the same as what's in our in our software for who's buried where, and mm -hmm. you know all of those good things. Why does it have to be checked over? For accuracy, for for to to put a name on perhaps a person who's buried somewhere in the Clifton Cemetery that we don't know anything about. Oh. And so you're saying it. we should say yes, we'll take it. Oh, absolutely. Because right now, it's as it was before, it was in an individual's house that could burn down. Sure. <coughs> so one would go through. So they through. could be in a fire station that could burn down. <coughs> but realistically, <laughs> once, it, once it's, it's done, we have, we, our archives, are not at the Greene County Archivist, Archivists. Sorry about that, Robin. <laughs> they are at Wright State University in their mm -hmm. archivist, archivist section. In their archives. In their archives. All our old judicial books, our, all our old census stuff from the 30s and the 20s. And then what do we store? I mean, we do have a room with a dehumidifier mm -hmm. and all that we store uh, out of the garage. What do we store there? We store as much uh, unvaluable information as, as humanly possible. Are all the resolutions stored there? Or, or for a certain amount of years, they're stored mm -hmm. here? Yeah, then they yeah. go over there. And then they should go away after a, a relatively short amount of time. And I think I had, resolutions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's, there's no need to, keep, there's, there's only about two different things that you have to keep, uh, okay. as personal files and, and s s something else you have to keep for a long time. Everything else, there's a, your records retention schedule shows how long you've got to keep it. But the thing that I learned, and I'm not going to belabor this point about this convention that I went to, but I always thought we had to keep everything, and then after a certain amount of time, go through it and, and divide it into the stuff that it's past the date and when we had to keep it, and that way we can get rid of it, and then you go through the whole thing and you've got a, uh, you got a, you got a, you got a, you got a number or how many boxes and this, that, and the other thing. But one, one thing I did learn, which was very interesting, was you only have to keep records that pertain to ongoing or existing township business, something that, that you're some project you're working on or some program or some something you don't have to keep all this stuff from um a little miami riverway and to, to see whether you want to go on their paddle tour in june or uh or a zillion other i'm not going to call them junk mail but things that don't pertain to current existing township business i went through last year's records which are here that i haven't taken over to the, yeah. to the and i reduced them by 
at the very least two thirds, if not more. Based on this new information you received. What? No, this is I, I'm, oh, I'm channeling Robin. Okay. All throw, right. th throw it if it's not in the if it's not in the in the retention schedule, throw it away. Right. Okay. Based on this new training you've got, yeah. uh -huh. you, you wouldn't have if you had not gone here. I would not. And you reduced by two thirds. That's good. And and the times that the the couple of times I think I've done it twice, gone through the records retention room, and called out about twenty cases of, crap. Yeah. You know, and got rid of it. But I did it by legal. I mean, I sent yeah. in the thing to the state and uh, then, to the historical yeah. society, and everybody else got a chance to look at it. And, and that's then I called a, a shred chair. it. That's a chair thing, right? Yeah. yeah so. then, I called, then I called shred it, and they came and <laughs> got rid of it. If it me, it but there's me. lots of it out there. There's can, lots and lots of it out there. Can, just to make a point, because most of the townships either have forgotten or don't, or don't realize it, and that is the Green County Archives and the Green County Archivists are at your disposal. They, 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 they offer free services to townships to help with that kind of thing as well. To help sort? They're, they're or, and to help to start the process? And yes. The Green County? Green County Archives. I might use it as a reference because you, you think that has to be done soon or you don't know. There's a, supposed to be a schedule. But, but as an example, the, the, when you run the conservatorship of, the, of, that, of, the, of that document could have been done through the Green Ar County Archives, and I believe county cut funds would have paid for it. I believe. Okay. Well, I will see how how thorough she was at cleaning it up. All right. Where are we? Uh, Yellow Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation. We did meet uh, right after our last meeting. That is the township's last meeting. Um, meets regularly here, the first Tuesday of every month. Um, there was some township dis specific discussion, nothing to do with making decisions or. Uh, I guess I took it personally, really, pressing me on why are we so committed to agricultural zoning and uh, we seem to be anti-growth and uh, you know no commercials, no new commercial zones, no. Uh, and I made reference to. Was it roughly 10 years ago? There was a community visioning that included both the village and the township, and that's what we've been acting from. And we have zoning, and I the, feel the visioning committed. was a little earlier, and that drove the comprehensive planning, and that was approximately okay. 10 years ago. So it was a little bit and, different. And that we've I've been talking about revisiting that, uh, and that. You know, open to community input, and, but right now we've adopted the zoning, and it was out of a. It wasn't arbitrary and imposed. It was out of a community process that was before I was on. And the zoning board of has to legally be based on that. Legally, it has to be based on that comprehensive plan. These plans. Mm -hmm. it's, um, uh, and I'll just remind you. That it's the situation I reported last from the previous month. We do have a, a community foundation. Uh, now I'm forgetting the name of it, but uh, Lisa Abel was being paid for by the community foundation as an interim executive director uh, and is laying out plans for. Her, she will propose uh, steps for advertising and hiring uh, her replacement, uh, which assumes that there will be more money coming in. So they may be asking the village and the township and the school board to pitch in for uh, 
salary of a future director? Mm -hmm. Well, we pitched in 38,000. When the school board and the village pitch in their 38,000, I'm ready to start writing checks. But we we gave 38,000 to the YSDC? Yes, we gave it to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We gave it to them in, in a building just down the street that they sold. When, yeah, in the sale, oh, they, they, they got thirty thousand dollars for it. Well, 10%. that was their fee for doing the selling. Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, they were given the building and and the my report. Okay. Yeah. And the report. I wasn't going to bring this up tonight, but let me see how fast I can say it. Okay. Because we keep saying, yeah, we really ought to visit that long-range plan. We ought, we keep saying we really ought to revisit that. And um, these days, the process feels like people just want you to go to a um, go straight to a um, what do you call it, consultant and have you design a process and stuff. Don, you had brought up like back in the good old days in the 70s when they started all this green stuff that, that their process was that a series of community topics. Did you not tell me about they held a series of community discussions on the large topics that we're dealing uh, with? It wasn't quite that way but there were task forces People could volunteer to be on, organized by the Village Planning Commission, uh, and then over a, I don't know that it was a full year, but each task force uh, had community events uh, with input. So there was commercial areas planning, there was institutions and organizations, there was uh, so just to out to unincorporated areas task force an idea, and you brought up last time, revisit the community for about solar, large and small, um, about any type of commercial venture we would allow. Like we're getting pressure from them. Um, Nick, I talked to Nick Buddhist from the Glen, and he has this concept that there's a per, um, there should be a category of conservation zoning where um, that, that you're neither agriculture nor commercial. You're, there's some big entities that he pointed out. Like the Glen, perhaps? Like the Glen, oh, yeah. that one included. Yeah. Whereas, um, but there are others. There's solar, there's. And before we run to a consultant who just holds a couple of things and comes back with ideas from a largely uneducated public. Just, just this vision that, that we ourselves pick five grand topics or six grand topics, hold public meeting much in the spirit like we did with the solar one, which was very successful and got different kinds of people, mainly township and village people. And we really documented those and the input there. And then when we go to a consultant, which Don doesn't, may not, it's kind of against going to a consultant for it, but it seems to be what people do, and, and this is a tough process without them. Then we have this cache of information say, this is, this is what we've collected so far about how the community feels about these things. Can, let me get, can let, you take this input? Let me, let me get this straight. You want us, I mean, I, I'm assuming we is us, you want us to do the job of the zoning commission. That, I mean, that's their job is to is to is to gather this information. Is to gather, but their job is to gather public input. Yeah, and then you want us to do their job of hiring a consultant because we can't hire a consultant. Only the zoning commission can hire a consultant because they're the only ones that can put together a comprehensive plan. We're we're just. We're just either getting in the way or treading water or spending money so and time. The three trustees can't have any input into the comprehensive plan. There must be some. No, they cannot. I mean, they can go to the they can go to the public hearings and the meetings and all the rest of that stuff, just like everybody else can can. But we we have no position on their boards or their subcommittees of comprehensive subcommittee or, or whatever it might be. So five unelected people. I learned all that side, last time. Side, five unelected people direct our land use planning. That's correct. And we, but we end up <laughs> having to vote on it. No, we do not. We do not vote on the comprehensive plan. 
We vote on any zoning regulations oh, okay. that have been generated as okay. a result of the comprehensive okay. plan, but not the plan itself. So we're not allowed to hold public. We're not allowed to hold public forums in which that that information is followed. Well, I'm not zone. saying we're not allowed, but it's it's stepping on somebody else's toes, and I'm not sure how receptive zoning commission would be to having us tell them how to do their job. Hmm. I've tried that in the past also, and and didn't have very good uh, I know, and I've <laughs> results. Talked to, I've talked to both Deandra and Jen about this in the past. Suppose some, we don't do this, but suppose the community stacks their zoning commission with industry. The industry drives the visioning of the community. How do they stack it? I mean, we appoint the zoning commissioners. Okay, let's we'll drop this for tonight. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll <laughs> I'll okay. I mean, I've gotten that same. That's the end of my community development right. corporation <laughs> report. Is that funny, Mark? <laughs> What's so funny over there? <laughs> no, this, this is this is all good. Morgan Fellowship, by the way. Lisa Abel, she's a, she's being paid by the more. Oh, I'm okay. going through a Morgan Fellowship. Okay, you got to the bottom of that too. Thank you. Um. We got to do this health insurance thing. Oh, I talked to Don. Me and Chris have been apprised of um, our options for our health insurance this year. Um, Chris says that we have to vote on it, and she wants the answer this week. So, um, and has told me that we need to completely explain it to you. And I asked you if you trust us. Do we have to completely explain it? Unless, well. Can, we're well, allowed look at me. We're allowed to meet privately and explain it. But then we'd have to well, have Well, I saw I saw the alternative proposals. Okay. Is it one of them or is it a it is one hybrid? Of them. It is one of them. Remind me. It's it's intense, buddy. This the last one? Mm -hmm. So what's the what's the effect going to be on uh, firefighters? Well, um, not much. So. So not increase of d deductibles or. There's an increase of deductible, but we have a secondary insurance that picks that up. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 risk would be ours. Um, but. To, to take this, it would increase our risk um, by $30,000. This is so complicated to say. I, I, but it would cost $20,000 less. But th this plan costs $20,000 less for the year. And um, our secondary insurance would, would cover us. We're barely using our secondary insurance. We've never even even approached our maximum. I, I don't know. There's no way to. There's no easy way to do this in a meeting to explain this to you. Yeah, um, you don't have to go through um, the detail. I, I, you answered my question. Okay. There would be no effect on, on, on the on the fire department's bottom line because we have our secondary insurance. There would only be. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I would entertain a motion. I talked to him thoroughly with this. I explained it to Chris, and he said, yeah, he got it right away because he's done this before. Um, I entertained a motion that we change our, I don't even know how to describe it, change our, our current coverage to another plan that has been presented to us, a plan that has no name. but. <laughs> Well, plan C. I was going to say A, B, C. How does it? How many are there? Option one, option two, option three. We we'll go, go from our current option uh -huh. to option three, three. Okay. as will be described in the minutes of this, um, in, in not in the minutes of this meeting, but in our. There you go, Cindy. In our, if anybody, if anybody public wants to see um, our uh, our it plan, is, it is a. I still make the motion. It is a detailed attachment. I'll second. Um, Hearing any, hearing no further discussion, we vote. So we can second it to 
change township insurance coverage to option three as enumerated in the attached handout. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. See, that wasn't so bad. Motion? That was easy. Yeah. I don't see why we can't make these little technical decisions without a federal case. But anyway, that's just the way life is. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. I don't need to follow the guy out for a while. See you, Don. Dan, you gotta go? You gotta go. I've already talked about the Don. So I've talked to, this, to Don about this, and he was enthusiastic. Um, we've been talking about different manuals and procedures and personnel manuals and um, things such as, um, you know, a manual that tells everything we do in case the three of us go on a cruise together and this ship sinks and somebody needs to run this place. And I, I, I was looking at Cynthia's um, resume and CV again, and I realized that she's a person who's done this for small governments before. And so I asked her, hey, do you, do you think if we ever need help with any of this? Um, she has prepared these kind of documents for people before. So with our input, um, I just, nothing we have to vote on tonight, but how urgent do you think some of these things, both of you have mentioned me to think, we really ought to have a procedures for that, or we really, you were concerned about the meeting manual, but. Uh, I, I thought it was a good idea, and Jen Huber said it was unnecessary. Yeah. We would never use it, with the exception of whenever we scheduled a public meeting, we had a document that she forwarded that's some, around there somewhere, yeah. I think it was attached to her. Says so all you gotta do is just hand it out to everybody there and have them sign it, collect it, said that they will abide by the rules set forth. And if they don't, see you later. So I guess we're not doing that one. But we can. We certainly oh, can. Oh yeah, we can. It, it, no, but I'm talking about other things like that. Um, Don, you've come back from meetings saying, well they said you should really have a manual like where is the do we have something there, that tells everything we do, for example, like Yeah, the the, uh, the one from Miami University that I thought I okay. gave you a copy yeah, of that. that. That's specifically us. And that, is, that is the official township trustees. The township trustees. And there is a fiscal officer one too, but you know, that's the manual that is, being, is used by, <laughs> by, it sounds like, by most of the legal representatives that represent townships that when somebody calls them up and says, you know, I have this problem. Can I can I go out and spend fifty thousand dollars on a new truck, or do I have to bid it? Well, they just look at the township manual, and they charge you a hundred bucks to make that answer. At least, um, okay. Well, maybe I, maybe I'm mistaken. I thought. Look through the manual again and see okay, if it's I'll, I'll lacking see, the types of things that you're. And our personnel manual that we're going to redo is we can handle that. At and we're not going to redo it, we're going to tweak it. At the okay. state conference, not this past January, but the one before, I uh, went to a workshop that recommended a uh, fiscal officer uh, procedures be adopted for your specific township. And procedures is the wrong word, um, but it Uh, they said so that if the um, if the fiscal officer was you know suddenly hospitalized and not able to do anything, or uh, someone could walk in, open up the the booklet, and follow the instructions and do the job. There's no way in hell. I mean, yeah. the, 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 there isn't. And then more, more broadly, you'd open up the booklet to the state auditor and, and where the, the phone number says, and, you know, uh, visiting fiscal officer's um, directory, mm -hmm. that's who you'd call. There, you couldn't 
just have somebody walk in off the street and open up anything and do well, a job. Well, okay, a, previous, a retired fiscal officer that would come and see right. these well, she, files are in this yeah. such and such place and every third Tuesday I do such and such and um, that's the kind of manual that I was thinking of. Okay. All right, no further discussion needed. If we ever do decide that we need something. Um, and I think that we're coming to our last item here. Um, Website motion? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it may seem odd that we need to rescind the website. We, um, you, you both know that I've gone back to um, Deborah and um, her, her company, and um, we had made a motion to contract with IPanda, and um, we need to rescind the motion to contract with IPanda. I move that we rescind the website uh, contract uh, that we entered with IPanda. A second. Any further discussion? Not I. Hearing none, may we vote. So we moved and seconded to rescind the website motion um, contract, to, uh, specifying a contract with IPanda at a previous meeting. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Winter? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Motion carried and previous is rescinded. I have two ends of old business. Um, uh, are we in the, what are we in the future going to do about the moratorium that I suggested at the last meeting about local and um, uh, not countywide, uh, local utility scale and small scale solar moratorium for six months to give zoning commission the time to uh, address the issue both on a uh, zoning regulation basis and a overall feel of the community basis. Or are we just going to roll the dice and hope nothing we don't want happens? Uh, remind me the, the, the legal basis of this. Uh, the state legislature has passed uh, In January. Lo enabling laws for us, for for townships, mm -hmm. to uh, control zoning of uh, of utility or small scale, however it is, under 50 megawatts, and that the that includes the option of a, a six month moratorium. No, no, that would be us just saying that, right? Well, and we'd be uh, asking for the same moratorium from the from the county commission. Or that would be for the uh, utility scale, mm -hmm. and it would be permanent, and except that we anticipate coming back to them. Uh, well, it would not be permanent. It would be a, a six months also, and give, giving our zoning commission a chance to. I didn't realize they had the option of this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, they can put any, any time they want on it. Well, um, as long as it doesn't I, go I past their, their elected officials' time, because at that point, you get a new elected official, they may or may not mm -hmm. keep to that commitment. And truly, the I'm supportive of them. And truly, the, the, the okay. same official doesn't have to keep to that. I don't understand. I hear you, Don, you're in favor of it. I, I, I don't understand what happened. You and I had had something just, we had had previous discussions of they can re return it either on the large scale, they could, we could ask for a restriction, they could overturn it. We could ask for a six months of restriction. They could, they have the power in the next meeting to do it. Mm -hmm. And I thought you were pretty convinced that it wasn't worthwhile. And then I don't know what happened. What changed? It's better than nothing. It, it would show our commitment to having our appointed body, zoning commission, through their meetings that all these meetings that we should have you know 
about the things for the zone commission and about the comprehensive plan. That they're never going to have. No, 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 no. They're just on site. Uh, that was uh, trustee, or Chair Moyer? <laughs> it was, it was. Um, um, I don't see where the two are related. I don't see, I don't see how the large solar, I mean, I, could, I see why you want to do it, I, but, but to give space to, to our zoning commission to work out their thoughts on, on so, small scale solar and to do and to create the the regulations, I don't see how that's related to the large large scale solar. Why, why the two more moratoriums at once? I don't know because it seemed like they were both solar. Um, I, I, I'm not opposed. We could do it one piece at a time. Um, I'm not, I think Don's a little more. Don, I think oh, I've vested in, 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 in having it done on a, um, a large scale basis. I'm not, also, I'm not committed to restrictions at all. Well, there you go. Mr. Deciding I, I would like uh, I would support a motion uh, telling the planning the Zoning Commission uh, that we would like them to act on the solar question uh, whatever way they choose uh, and that we can put in the same motion that we uh, will oppose uh, any solar proposal until uh, our zoning has been upgraded. All right, let me get this straight. You are supporting a moratorium on large scale z uh, zoning or small scale zoning or both? <clears throat> Whatever the Zoning Commission has jurisdiction over, which would just be the small. Just the small, okay. Uh, a, a time frame? It, it would be, we urge six months, but I don't know that we can tell the Zoning Commission what. Oh, I think we can. I well, if you write a motion, I'm likely to support it. Uh, separately, I would like us to ask County Commission to uh, ban large scale uh, solar in Miami Township. Not put six months on it. Okay, well. Hmm. Then you can, we can go back in six months and ask them to remove the ban. I. Um I don't feel comfortable with having a, a, a broad, all-encompassing um, ban on it. If, if we don't do six months, I, I think I just let it, let it sleep until maybe I tell our zoning commission and make strong recommendations about what they think, and then you know we'll go from there. Well, uh, I'm. I mean, that's like saying. I will. I will. Uh, would you put a would you I'll put a permanent it. moratorium on, on on local zoning? I'll on bring under fifty megawatt. Would you support that? Permanent on le permanent, permanent prohibition. Mor prohibition on moratorium. Yes. Um, no, not forever. Zoning should be. But you're asking developed. for a permanent moratorium on. On large scale? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd be prepared to bring it aside to us, Madam Chair. How do you want to how do you want to I'll write uh, I could write a couple draft two draft resolutions for the next meeting. I don't know I don't have interest in proceeding on it. You think you, um, do I you don't have a motion you can present tonight? I don't. Uh, 
just sticking my nose in here, I hear no interest in a moratorium. I hear 100% interest in moratorium. Oh, and I hear six months interest in moratorium. I, I don't see whether there's... I'll support a six months. <laughs> I thought you wanted to do forever. Well, I'd like to, but I, I think I understand the law differently than you. You want to phrase it as six months? Fine. Do you want to write a resolution tonight, or? Uh, I'm not going to write a resolution tonight. I need it to be a little stronger. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have somebody with a little more legal knowledge write the resolution. But um, they're two different things. They're two. They're, they're two, I mean, they, they can't have both happen in the same resolution, of course. No. I mean, and I think the biggest, the biggest effect will be getting the, the Zoning Commission to start to uh, see, you know, how, does, how do we include solar in our zoning? Yep. Why, do, why do you feel, Chris, that they need protection while they do that? I mean, like, well, I, I know Cedarville did that. They said, well, give us three months or give us six months while our Zoning Commission... Because um, Joe's solar business could just pull up into the old uh, 340, uh, Dayton Hill Springs Road, the uh, Welch property. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, all six kids don't live anywhere around here. And for all I know, Joe Solar has been talking to all six kids. And, and they said, listen, you know, we can get you a sweetheart deal here. There's no zoning in Miami Township. You know, we can put 50 megawatts on there and, and you know, in, in six months time and you guys will be Rolling in the dough, and they'll and Richard all go. Job, Richard Zappel say this is owned agricultural, and there's no commerce on the agricultural land except for agriculture. Well, he'll be over. He'll be over run. That's why there's. That's why there's zoning on. There's, that's why it was gone through the legislature in order to enable the township to do that. That would make him the zoning czar. If there's if there's actual enabling legislation, he can't just say no. You know, we, we're not going to follow that. I mean, I realize it hasn't been adopted, but he's saying we're not going to follow it even if it is, is adopted. He's basically telling, saying, you know, zoning commission don't even think about writing any because, enabling legislation. Because the zoning resolution, which is legislation, says, and, and please, at people at home, this is not my philosophy, I'm just saying what the, that, that you can't ha have sell commercial electricity on agricultural land, I don't think. This is not commercial e electricity. If, at 50 megawatts and below, it's not commercial electricity. Yeah, well, well you, it is if you're not going to use it all on your farm. Well, I don't. I mean, to the state of Ohio, apparently. Well, no, it's not, it's not utility, mm -hmm. but it would be commercial because nobody's going to produce 50 megawatts of electricity and not sell it. Well, maybe... Maybe they'd have a, uh, a huge dairy operation or, or an egg, uh, a chicken operation or something. More power to them then. Or composting. More electric power to them. <laughs> 50 megawatts. That's, that's a 300 acre installation. I, I didn't make it. Okay. The, I, I look forward to discussing this and, and discussing a specific resolution at our next meeting. And, and we've kept these good people a long time. Um, I've noticed other bodies have different sections to their meeting where they can pass the, the, the business and then have another section where they turn off the cameras and have a meeting for business where these kinds of things are discussed. Do you know what I mean? So, Can you explain that to Chris? The county commission. And the village council. Uh, has, well, I don't know anything about how the village council does it. The county commission has a formal meeting where the, which they vote on resolutions and whatever, and then they adjourn to a work session, which is advertised in public, mm -hmm. uh, where they discuss different topics without keeping minutes. No, they, they, 
without the camera, but they do keep minutes. I do, I do believe well, minutes. Not the county meeting. commission, no. How could they have a public meeting without minutes done? That's what they do. They don't vote. Hmm. I'll have to get call, call you back on that one because I, I can't imagine a public. Well, because I, I sit in them, I witness them. And do you know that there's no one taking minutes? I never see the minutes. Maybe there's an eye in the sky recording everything. Oh my. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't believe that there's a public meeting, a, a, a work session without minutes. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it can't. Certainly. It can't be. Oh, I'm minutes. sorry, Madam Chair. All they, right. they do provide minutes for the work sessions. I've been receiving them for the last three or four years. Oh. Well, then I stand corrected. Although I sit in those minute those meetings and sure doesn't look like it. So, um, so what I'm saying is. Um, rather than maybe we can think about structuring our, our, our meeting for some of these tougher things like the thing we're dealing with now or let's get everything out of the way, turn off the camera, and without make our cases. We are under no obligation whatsoever to have this, this, these meetings recorded. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to though. Okay, I, I'm happy to also, but Okay. So what, what, I'll ask Cindy since you have a lot of experience. What then is the purpose, and Don too, of work sessions? What is the purpose of work sessions? Just so that you don't clutter up, just like we do, just clutter up? I would imagine. I don't yeah. I can't, I can't speak to the purpose. I just know that's how they function. Okay. Yeah, that's just an idea. It's not, I mean, what the, County, how the county commission does it, I don't understand how it developed that way. But yeah. okay, um, I do think the idea of structuring our meeting differently so that uh, you know, we identify some big picture topics that we want to have more thorough discussion um, instead of shoehorned at the end of the meeting when we're trying to. Wind up to where we go to another meeting. I mean, that's why Mark left. He was going to go to the mm -hmm. council. Traitor. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you satisfied, Chris? That we just, I don't want to just say kick it down, I don't want to kick your can down the road, but about the um, solar, I don't think we're done discussing it by any stretch of the imagination. Well, um, I'm trying, um, I'm going to have a uh, a, a resolution prepared for a six-month moratorium, and Don said he might vote for it. You said you would not vote for it. I probably would vote for it. So we'll see. So how we're we... talking about small school, small school, mm -hmm. our, our yeah. stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. For, for for the time being, anyway, I guess. Okay. Um. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn this. No, 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 no. Lots to talk about. You said you had another topic. I do have another topic. Now, Make it an easy one. Please okay. come on. I will freely admit I have very thin skin. You have what? Thin skin? Oh, okay. okay. Freely admit. However, and I don't know how to file this away in my thin skin file cabinet. But uh, Don and I received a uh, email from our chair on um, May the, uh, April the 9th, is that right? No, whatever. And it, it reads, at our last meeting, this is last meeting, we moved the road and bridges salary line to the, and the gas tax to the gas tax, uh, which is permitted, thus freezing up road bridge funds for, for other uses, such as the proposed, this is proposed, addition. The next line reads, we did not, that's capital N-O-T, we <laughs> did not, however, vote to fund the project. Is there anybody here that 
remembers that we voted, uh, that a resolution was, was, was uh, offered up and there was a motion and there was a second and we all voted. Cindy, did you take, did you take a vote on a resolution to, to uh, build some uh, building last meeting? Not in my notes. Right. So I'm not sure why it says we true. did not, however, vote to fund the project. Well, no, I, I mean, we okay. voted not to send missiles to uh, uh, the Ukraine either, but it's, all right. This still needs to be approved by a vote of the trustees. Is there anybody who doesn't agree with that? I, I agree with that. I think we should vote by resolution for a project of this size and cost. Is there any argument with that? I'd like to see the resolution to be specific about the building plans and materials, estimate of costs, listing of vendors and contractors if, if applicable. I personally like to be clear on all of the design, the cost, the materials before we would proceed. I'll put this on the, under the agenda un, under new business. I don't disagree with any of that, although I'm thin-skinned enough that I, I would think that in the past few years, I mean, I've overseen the acquisition of this property, the disposition of our old firehouse, the design, the construction, and the financing of six point seven five million dollars for the for the um, for the construction of this. I think I probably fairly conversant on how to uh, build a addition to a salt shed, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm being called out for trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I, I never intended to pull the wool over your eyes. But I don't think anybody here thinks we voted on building a new project. We did not, however, vote to fund the project. Okay, I'll explain to you why I wrote this. Okay. Right, we did not, mm -hmm. and I know, mm -hmm. right. I wrote that because I wasn't clear, because I wasn't clear that you would come back. My fear was that you and Dan were going to say, "Yeah, I think this would be good," and let go ahead and go ahead and call the guys over and pour the foundation. I mean, I feel no. I know that there have been times when we've loosely um, we got to put a road in the cemetery. Next thing I know, it's being dug. It's being it's being done. Um, We've approved a cemetery, and now well, the cemetery t cemetery needs a pump, and it needs a it needs electricity, and things have happened without input from others, and I just wanted to make sure I I left the meeting thinking that y'all had a plan in mind, you knew where it was going to be, you knew what it was going to be made of, and next thing I know, I'd be running I. I'd come back and say, well, we got that building put in. Like, what building put in? So, I, well, I'm not sure whether you're mad because I'm, you're in so... I'm trying well, not to be, I'm, not, okay. I'm just trying to be, not be so thin-skinned. Yeah. I'm understand. not sure if you're upset because I, I was like, we did not tell you, I did not tell you you could build a shit. Like, you say, like I accused you of something, or whether you're upset because I full well know how to, like you just said, I oversaw this kingdom. I full well know how to put an addition on a shed. Well, it sounds like I don't because I, you've called out everything that you want. I mean, you want the size and cost. You want the plans, the materials, estimates, uh, listing well, of all the vendors and all the contractors that applicable. I mean, isn't that reasonable that if we're going to spend $40,000 that, that we know what we're spending it on? Suppose you well, and Dan got together well, we and have something like that. Seven forty thousand. What's that's that? True. We haven't voted. We haven't even. I mean, we're putting the cart before the horse here. We we don't even know. Uh, you know. Well, what the you'd cost be putting the cart before the horse if you went ahead and started it. We're, who would? Well, I, I'm not sure that. How can I put this gently? Yeah, that, that, you're, that you're accusing me of starting something that would not have been voted on. Uh, of a size that would necessitate voting by the board of trustees. Uh, Say and that again. I said you're, you're, you're kind of insinuating that under my own authority that I would just say, okay, Dan, put her up, get her done, as Dale Reed used to say. Um, 
Haven't you done that nope. many times? Nope. Not without. Not I mean, without. That sheds have appeared in the cemetery fully built without us seeing what they were going to look like or what they were going to be. Well, you weren't on the board at the time. Um, there was discussion about that. There was discussion about the shed when the old one was taken down because the columbariums were put up. There was discussion about putting columbariums up and how much each one of those were going to be. There was discussion about how much the foundations for the columbariums were going to be. There was discussion about that silly little shed, which did, was not exactly the way I thought it was going to be, although the size is, but it was supposed to have been turned this way as opposed to this way. And it was... Uh, $7,000 or something like that, not including the, the foundation. But, you know, it was discussed. There's, there's nothing that, that's just pulled out of the blue that hasn't been discussed. Or that I was giving tacit responsibility for seeing through. If, if you might remember, Marilyn, one of the very first things that I think I tried to impart upon you when you, when you first were elected was you know, this is kind of a job of, of individuals. If you see something you think is important and you, and you want to get it done and you think it would benefit the township, you better be prepared to doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't just figure that, oh, yeah. that Don is going to write some resolution or going to look up some specifications for something that you want to do. You'd have to be responsible for doing it yourself. Right. And that's generally what I do. If I see something that I think would benefit the township, I'm, I'm going to move along with it. Now, let's say the moving along with it is, number one, consulting the person that I think it would benefit, in addition to consulting the taxpayers by not having equipment be uh, out in the uh, uh, weather, you know, 12 months a year. Um, but also, at, at that point, when I would come to you and say, okay, well, Dan got a, a quote from the guys who built the shed in or shed in, in the Clifton Cemetery, and this one would be at thirty by twenty-five, and it would cost you know one hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars, and or it would cost nineteen thousand dollars. It doesn't matter what it is. And you too, if we made a good enough case for you, would agree that this is something that would benefit Miami Township. It would benefit the road department. But, you know, if the fire department comes to us and said they need new air tanks because it needs, you know, it's to help uh, the safety of their people, if we have the money, we would authorize new air tanks. If we have the money for the shed, I would not, in the, my wildest dreams, propose building something that we could not pay for. It just never happened. And you would know exactly how much it was. Would I? Yes, you would. I mean, we would. I would know. I would know exactly how much it was once it. No, you would okay. know how much it, it, it was. Would, would I know what it's going to be? What I would. You I, would know how much it would be. What, roughly, would it be to the last penny? Would you know? No, no, would no, we no, decide no, whether no, to put no, that's not, that's you know six outlets in it instead of three? No, would we come I, back uh, to the board uh, for that? No. The, no, because the board would be authorizing. I honestly had the fear last bill thing that you y'all oh we got it in the right column we got the money in the right column let's go Dan. And I did. It's like oh is that the shit we got? <coughs> Um, yeah. is, is there some kind of shed you do want or don't no, want? No, I'm not, I'm like, no, it's not that. It's that, I just wanted you to make sure you know, <coughs> okay, we've decided, we call, Dan called his guys, I, we've had input, anybody who wanted any input, okay, he has a resolution, we're going to put a shed down that's uh, 20 by... I don't know what I'm trying to think. 20, 20 by 25, and it's going to, we're, we're going to lay a foundation, and it's going to be the such and such, and um, this is approximately what it's going to look like, something like that. This, we want to see these guys work good. So, um, and we think it's a good idea. Um, let's pass, and it's, we're estimated it's going to cost about $35,800, um, and we'd like to, to have it. Uh -huh. um, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion? Okay. And I didn't have confidence that you weren't going to move ahead of this without doing that. How could I do that? How could I? I how in the in the world could I get a motion? Well, because the, I don't pass that that well, because, was never made. Well, I was afraid you'd build it without a motion. Okay. Well. I mean, how did how no, did my the, how skin's getting really thin? How how did the how did the 
how did we put pumps and electricity in the in the cemetery without a, without a those without were a those were those were put into the law into a long range plan when we had the funds for it ten years ago. Was it? I mean, vaguely. Uh, Dan, you recall when I mean, we when so, we just, just, so, just a sec when we split the memorial garden, garden. memorial skin into the two elliptical sides. Think back. We have one side for the scattering garden. We have talked, I talked about having the other side being having a reflecting pool or some kind of fountain or something over there with maybe some benches that people could sit at. Yes or no? Yeah. Well, okay. We didn't move on it. That was going to necessitate electricity and water. We did not have the money at the time. We did not move forward with that at the mm -hmm. time. Didn't mean that we didn't want that. It just meant we couldn't afford it at the time. We got to the point where we could afford it, and so we put the electric and the water. Now, and then you to told us after it was done. So that was that was, decided, that was decided ten years ago. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know how long ago it was decided that we needed a new firehouse? I'm sure. No, I don't. It was easily ten years ago that they started talking about it. So you, didn't go, so you didn't go build the darn thing without, well, we didn't, without we didn't details the, and resolution? We didn't have the property. I'm sorry. And we, didn't build, we, didn't, um, we didn't build it without I, a resolution. I, I know that we don't have a limit by which we have to get permission to spend. I, I, I think we do need a limit by which one person cannot spend money. Um, there should be a, a top cap by which somebody can't spend money without a vote or a resolution. I mean, that's a separate issue, but it's a related issue. Uh, so, so you're saying because 10 years ago you had a vision of electricity and, and, and a pump in the cemetery that you and Dan could just go put it in and then tell the center it's done? Uh, no, but I think we could just go put it in and, and it would be done. I don't think we have necessarily an obligation to tell you that it was done. That was in the plan. I guess the I, I guess I'm with the I don't know. Oh, well, speaking of which, the plan. You still thinking about the gravel for the center plan, center drive? We need some gravel. Okay. In addition to that, Chair Moyer wanted me uh, or you to ask you not to mow the uh, the figure eight so wide. Kind of stay close to the gravel path where you're mowing, although the gravel, that's hard to see. But it seems like it's getting wider and wider. It's just a half mower deck width, and so they can see the headstones. I mean, the path there is just, if you don't, it's clear out over the road. The prairie grass mm -hmm. will be, that's why we do that. So we have at least a buffer to, to where the end of the grave is. I agree. I merely said the paths are getting wider. They might actually what? not be. You agreed. You said it's just a matter of not knowing. I said maybe we have to delineate them. Look at the original plans and see if we, we're not getting wider. We were also thinking that in the place where the figure eight comes around and it used to come to a point, at this point of the eight where it met, you know, the, the point's kind of gotten dull. Oh, yeah, where the road is? Yeah. 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 It would be nice to let that grow up a little bit, just so it has a little more definition. I mean, I'll quit mowing it if you want. Not quit mowing it. I've just been mowing around the frost proof, you know. Just mm -hmm. kind of, I can, yeah. I can let them go clear on out. Too. Yeah. We'll keep it clear on out. It's just because it goes a little. We'll keep it on it. Maybe it's we have to go out there look at the old plants and um, put stakes. Well, stakes are probably getting your way, but paint? No, we can't do just, mm, organic paint. Okay. Um, well, anyway, I, I had forgotten to bring that up the okay. last couple of times, and I wanted to remember it because I was so worried. I, now I'm not. Well, yeah. Just let me finish. Just no, no. One thing. Speak your mind. I can tell it's been bothering you. Well, only for a week. I know. Um, a, a limit to what you spend. I mean. Yeah, early on, when I was first this, new, you, you said that encumbers us. It's. Hmm? No, it, I don't, don't. You just speak. Go ahead. Uh, 
In theory, yes. I mean, it, it sounds like a good idea that, no, Don, you, you got a project, don't spend more than $2,500 without coming and asking our permission to spend $2,515 or whatever. You are limited to $2,500, not, not a penny more. Assuming you have heard about the project. <laughs> in, in, in some way, shape, or form, because I feel that we are three independently elected individuals working together. This is where it gets a little bit money. Independently elected, we're, you know, we have what, things that we want to get accomplished. We bring them to the board. We say, you know, we'd like to have a, uh, we'd like to have the gravel uh, drives in the, in, the old, in the old cemetery where they're just ruts. We would like to have those paid this year. We have the money. We've had complaints about them. Not to mention, it would look a whole lot nicer if those were if those were paid. We had a, I mean, we had some rough ideas of, of how much they were going to be. They were going to be somewhere between forty and sixty thousand, depending upon whether you did them all or you took the you took the tail up onto sixty eight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We agreed to go ahead and have that done. But I don't think any of the three of us felt that we should come back and say, okay, it's not going to be 40 to 60. It's going to be $47,642.50. Is that okay to spend that much money, Don? Is that okay to spend that much money? Had, had, we, had we appropriated, had we voted on mm -hmm. doing it? On doing it, yes. And approximately how much? Approximately, time? yes. Well, we also listed everything we were asking the county engineer to bid on, or to include in the task, and didn't think that ended up being included. You mean like the full depth reclamation on a couple of the drives, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was included in the whole, the whole, and res uh, result. Yeah, is that what you mean? Well, I'm just saying that sometimes when we go through and say we, we want to redo this road, we want to we want to asphalt this road, we want to chip seal this, mm -hmm. uh, we don't vote on the price. Right. I mean, we Correct. vote on an approximate price for the yeah. for the total thing. And in the past, we're able to you know, put either uh, an additional road on or take it off. It's, it's hard to take it off. We probably can't put it on anymore. So, um, so anyway, but... But there might be, there might have been times, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't have felt uncomfortable if there was a road that we didn't do one year and then just added it to the list the next year mm -hmm. because all the prices were so low and it wasn't actually on the list that we voted on in the resolution. That, but that would be a violation. But I can see that happening. One last example, and then it's, it's time to go. Everybody wants to get to the village. Okay. I don't fully understand exactly what you're upset about, but um, I, which thing you're upset about. Okay. Well, um, okay. So well, let me finish this. Uh, I, I was thinking. Don't forget the cap for all caps, and for not. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I, I thought it was interesting that that we were talking about this and the building, and then it came to mind that well, we just decided to ch change um, uh, website designers in, in midstream, and no one came to the board and said, uh, I don't think we should use Iola, Iona, Ipanda anymore because of whatever, whatever, whatever. I, you know, I'd like to have a motion to, to discontinue that contract. I mean, I hadn't heard that until tonight. It was done prior to tonight. I haven't, you know, no one's come. I, I gave you the information of why I was doing it probably by a, not a good source, I think by email it was. Right, it, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't at a meeting. Oh. And, but also, by the, in the same token, 
Marilyn, you're obviously going to contract with another website provider for a certain amount of money. I don't have any idea how much money that is. I don't know if you got more than one bid on, the, on those on that website change, that redesign. Um, I, I specifications, went, I went back to the cost. website person that you. Um, I went back to the website person that you originally did the website with. Okay, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know where any of this stood. Well, I put it in email. But... Well, but I was kind of thinking, you know, when we talked about coming before the board with a motion to spend money, are, are you going to bring a motion to the board at some particular time to contract with by design for? Fifty-eight hundred dollars for a, a website redesign. I, I don't plan to redesign the website, but if I did, I'd come to the board. Well, she's not going to do it for free. Is that her name? Deb Slater. Oh, she's not redesigning. She's just fixing the things that she was. She was motivated to fix the things that I wanted to fix once I well, said okay. But I think that's I a, was good, basic, a good example, however, of how we have areas of sort of de facto responsibility and trust. That is, if Lee Sloan called me up and said this is unexpected, but there's going to be a public meeting of, of the power siding board or whatever, and um, that's going to, going to take $1,000 of my time uh, to go to that. Uh, or, or, you know, I'm making that up. But, mm -hmm. I would feel that I could say, go ahead. Although that has happened with a little bit more money, and you came back to say, hey, Lee Sloan says we're, go we're going to be doing this, this. He's, he want, uh, he's going to need this much money, and you have come back and asked us for that. Yeah, but if, I mean, if he gave me like two days' notice and said, okay, but this is $40,000. So we're projected. I mean, well, we but, freed it up. I see, well, let, let me ask you. Is it that you were going to put in a resolution and describe it, and of course, Marilyn, how dare you suggest I do otherwise? Or is it, are you mad because you don't want to put it in a resolution and describe it? I didn't want to be told how to do it. How to build the shed, how to design the shed? Yeah, no, and what was necessary to, to have it passed by this board? What information had to happen? I mean, it, it made it sound like you had to have the size and the cost. You had to well, be specific about, about size, the size. Yeah, that's important. Cost, that's you, important. You had to have it be specific about the building plans and materials and an estimate of cost. Listing of all the vendors, we got to know those, and the contractors. You personally like to be clear on, on what the design is, cost again, and materials. You want well, to know what uh, materials we're going to use. I would say that I went over the top on that, I'd say. But yeah, I'd like to know. And you, and you will know. For $40,000, yeah. what are we getting? Is, you're, you're, is, is it going to be a, a shell? Is it, going to, is it going to have a foundation? Is it going to... These types of projects, unlike buildings, are not done by architects and bondsmen and this, that, and the other thing, yeah. and a whole cadre of lawyers. Yeah. They're done by smaller companies that do these things on a yeah. daily basis. And they have, more than likely, they have packages. And they have packages right. that are put together right. based on the size and what the customer right. is looking for. And once the customer tells them what they're looking for, they put one of these packages together, give it to the customer, the customer brings it to us, and you see what the plan is, what the size is, what the materials is, what the vendors cool. are, what the, what the, cool. what the, yeah, whether there's water or and electricity or there. Does everybody see it? Well, everybody's going to okay. see it. It's going to come before the board. I must admit that I went over the top because <laughs> I, I swear to God, Chris, I thought you and him were going to go build something like, okay, that's 40000 and those, those two got to build their dream shed. I mean, what, what were you building? Did we need it? Does it have foundation? Did it make sense? I wasn't being a, a, a jerk about it. I got to know every detail because Marilyn's got to know if the concrete's good. or It wasn't like that. It was more like, okay, now that we moved money from over here to over here, are, we, are, you, are you guys off and running? No. Okay, that's, I wasn't clear on that. So it wasn't about, Chris, tell me how it, it, all that <laughs> detail. Is all that. If I could take that detail back, because I was emphasizing, you, you can't just say, hey, we need a shed. Can you guys allocate 40000 Okay, we allocated it. Let's go do it. Because I, I don't find that out of the realm of something you do. I, but maybe I'm totally wrong. Okay, but my skin still would have been thin thinking, and, and I would have been upset. 
thinking that you thought that I somehow pulled the wool over your eyes, and I guess Don's and everybody else's, by passing a resolution under the table to build, to have this money out there. So now Dan thinks that he can go to work tomorrow morning, pick up the phone and say, okay, we're ready to go. Bring in the bulldozers. It didn't happen. And I want you to know, it wasn't about pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. It was, it was, a, it was about... We did not, Capitals, vote to fund this project. Yeah, we did not. Well, somebody must have thought we about, did. No, see, that's, <laughs> no, that's a mistake. I know you know we didn't. I was just saying, I was, what I was saying, like, what I was saying was, what I should have said, in order to build the project, we'll have to have a resolution and see the, see the thing. I didn't think you were pulling the wool. I think you've been doing this largely alone for 26 years. <laughs> and that you're thinking, okay, I got the money now. I don't want to get tied down. I don't want to get bogged down in details. Let's just get it done then. In, 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 a, in a way, that's true. Yeah. The, the same way that Dan, I decided with his agreement, but it was my idea that he needed a replacement dump truck snowplow for the one that's, that's being retired for a, a couple of reasons. I won't even get into those, but it was my decision that he needed that. He agreed with it. Mm -hmm. At that point, I came and I said, uh, Dan's going to need a new snowplow here pretty soon because the other one's getting old and he's on maintenance, etc. It's got over 100,000. Okay, we agreed that's the case. That was basically carte blanche. We did not, I mean, yes, the chassis, I came back at some point because it took so long to order the damn thing. I came back and said, well, it's going to be $48,000 for the chassis. Okay, well, okay, $48,000 for the chassis and we ordered the chassis. And then a year later, when the chassis finally came in, it went to the it went to the to the supplier to put the hydraulics on the stainless steel bed in the back and the plow and etc. Well, that's another forty-eight thousand dollars. Well, okay, forty-eight thousand more. How many? It's, yeah, that's only ninety-eight thousand more for this thing. So we just spent a hundred thousand dollars for a, a truck to a, a snow plow that. There's not one plan that I get put in front of everybody. Sorry. There's no bid package. There's no specifications. There's no design. There's no vendors. There's no cost per, you know, the, the, the salt spreader cost $7,500 and the plow cost $5,500 and the, the new hydraulics cost $6,000. It was just, you know, we needed a new one and so that's the deal. This is where we bought the last 15 of them, the same exact place and got them outfitted at the exact same place that every township takes their stuff in this area, it's K.E. Rose takes their stuff to get put together and to get a snow plow. So now we've got a new, nice, new, dependable 2022 or three F450 snow plow, and we'll hopefully get 10,000 10, or, or a little bit better on the old one to, to offset some of those costs. You can say exactly the same thing about this medic that isn't here, and God knows if it's ever gonna be here, but it's basically, I went to Colin, I said, Colin, you guys are gonna need a new medic here pretty soon. This is back when we didn't have any money, you know, but we did have the firehouse money. I said, you know, I'll go to the board and, and ask them to commit to the to the firehouse money. You know, you know, you guys get going on this. Oh, uh, you know how that's been going. But anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. But the cost of it, did did we agree on a four hundred and twenty three thousand dollar medic? No. At the point, at the first place that we agreed to was to buy a chassis, which we couldn't get delivery on for another year and a half. But we knew the chassis was going to be about the same thing, so it was almost exactly the same thing as the dump truck. A little different configuration. There was no back window, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But not that much different. It was going to be $48,000, $49,000, somewhere in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. And I, I threw out that number out right at the very beginning. And, Never heard from it again because it hasn't been ordered yet for who knows why. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I, I, I truthfully don't understand. I truthfully will admit that at this point in the game, I don't understand how it is that 
we could start with the little thing and then it grows and grows and grows and grows and you came back and there we didn't see plants and things. I mean, I know organically it's to get it done, you have to do that. But plants I and things for a snow plow? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, you know, the things you had to add. add. You, said you, for, you said we went ahead and we ended up spending all that snow plow stuff, yeah. And it ended up being a whole lot more money. Well, we knew it was going to be more money. I, okay. Not so, as much as the last snow plow was because of inflation. I mean, the yeah. last one was... What, 80,000? 78,000? 83,000? 83, something like that. We get quotes before we have the work done. Yeah. We get price up front. Yeah, I know. But but I didn't bring the quotes printed out with a resolution to the board saying, now, at this point, we need to pass a resolution to spend an additional 48,000 for the outfitting of the chassis that's now sitting over in the garage. Yeah, and I don't know if it's proper or not. Probably not. You're right. Probably not. I honestly thought you guys were going to go on a tear and build something. And and this isn't like, I don't know, Marilyn Moyer wants to know this. It was more like... It does. <laughs> Marilyn Moyer wants to know this. It does. <laughs> but it was a, a, there were examples of things before you spend $40,000 that you bring to so the board. So there was a tear in my eye. Was that yeah. I know. It's, you took it hard. Um, yeah. um, so, yeah. Okay, easy come, easy I, go. No, I mean, so what, where are we with this? We're one big happy family, that's where we are. Is that we are, so if we move ahead on this, we'll all kind of just get... Uh, we'll be touchy-feely, we'll have, we'll have drinks and, and, and cupcakes and... No, I mean... Oh, what? I mean, we'll say, okay, we're ready to move on the shed. This is approximately what we're gonna do. How you feel? Wanna vote? Sure. Okay. That's what I mean. So that's where we are. The chair and speaks, sorry, the Richard. chair gets what the chair wants. Oh, so, so, so we're having a resolution because the chair wants it, not because it's proper to have a resolution to spend $40,000. Oh, wait, we would have done that anyway, but the totally. chair wanted it. Okay, oh, I, absolutely. I, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't yes. know that. Yes, it, yes. Is, it appears like things get freaking bought, like lots of things get bought with it. It's like, whoa, that, that was another, there goes another hundred grand. Well. Some of us, it takes a little longer to learn that there are more than one fiscal officer in this operation. And I think we're learning. That there's okay, a, a new fiscal officer in no, town. That's, see, that's a joke that's diminishing because... It's not diminishing, it's it, growing. It is. It's like, oh, it's it's Marilyn, right Marilyn right. wants to see how we spent the 40 grand. She must be a new fiscal officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, we all sign every check and we vote on every expenditure. True, so I go through these checks, I'm like, damn, I wonder what that was. <laughs> we'll pull it aside, find out. Yeah, it, yeah my responsibility, absolutely. So I hope that, um, I hope that this little conflict has been productive. And that I understand more where you're coming from and you understand more where I'm coming from. I believe